Are we uh, getting married then? Ooh. Let's just take things one step at a time, eh? I'm only messing. Besides, I want you down on one knee with a big rock when you propose. Yeah? Well, if I had a big rock, I'd be clouncing you around the head with it. Blab me see mum and dad like that. They just seem like the ideal opportunity. Yeah? Well, I felt sorry for him. Why? Why? Because I know what it's like to have a teenage daughter tell you she's pregnant when it's the last thing you're expecting. Well, this is hardly the same. I mean, I am much older than your Sarah was. Oh, you're still only 18. Yeah, and I'm in a long-term relationship with a man that I love. Yeah, a man who'd sooner we weren't rushing into having kids, never mind getting married. You are so boring. Hey, I'm only being honest about the way I feel. Do you want me to lie? No. I do want you to be happy about the baby. I am happy about the baby. And I suppose you're right. It is better to have things out in the open. I don't want to keep secrets from other people. Me neither. And that is the only reason why I did what I did. What's this? Full English. What's your little like? I can't have this. Yes, you can. What about my diet? For one day only, you can eat whatever you like. Won't do you any harm. Uh, this is from the man who threw a wobbler because he had one of Sunita's barges. <sighs> I thought I'd explain that. Yeah, but this is the other extreme, isn't it? I'm not saying you should eat like this every day. I just think we've both been taking this diet thing a bit too seriously. I still want you to reach your target weight for your sake, but today, go on. Lay your hair down. Hiya. Yeah. Hiya. It's only for me I should be in my school. I've only got five minutes now. Well, why don't we just bunk off and stay, mate? The world's going to end a lot sooner if I get caught bunking off. Oh, go on. We'll sell some stuff on the net. Like what? I haven't got anything. Why not? Your house is full of junk. David? I'll get something for you tonight, I promise. Hi, David. Give us a chip. I'm starving. Uh, no way. Get your own. Don't be so tight. Just give him one. There you are. Hey, uh, if his dad got my sister up the duff, does that make me and him related? <laughs> what are you on about? Have you not heard? Heard what? Justine, what can we do for you? Some boy racer just knocked one of my wing mirrors off. You can get one of the lads to fix it, could you? Right, I'll have a word with Clive. Clive, I've got Mrs Davenport here. She's got a little problem with a car. It's a wing mirror. Yeah. Ask if they can run the vac round and give it a wash while they're at it. Did you get that? It's coming over. Can I get you a coffee while you wait? Sally, we're mates. Relax. You don't have to do the whole customer service number. Well, you're the boss's wife. I'm just making sure I look after you. Well, I know how good you are at your job, Sally. Ian's always singing your praises. Is he? Talk of the devil. Oh, it's you. Brought the car in to have the ashtray emptied, have you? Very funny. This <laughs> 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 is a bit cloak and dagger, isn't it, Fred? You'll be glad we're meeting incognito when you hear what I've got to say. Well, you managed to dig some dirt up on Sunita. Excellent. Hey? It's a joke. If anything, it's, it's to do with your suitability to old eye officers come into question. <laughs> Me? I mean, I'm squeaky clean. Well, what's been said? Because it hasn't got anything to do with my accounts in Mumbai. Then Nobody's the... questioning your integrity as a businessman. Well, you know, what, you know what politics is like these days. It's all about personality. And the voters, they love me. Mm. Not according to my private poll findings. Everyone I speak to says I make a great president. To your face. Bella from Boozy Bella says I'm the best thing that's happened to the WTA in like 20 years. All right. She told me she thinks you're a slime ball. Yeah, but a woman's a drunkard. I bet everyone else you spoke to said good things. Slimy, arrogant, obsequious. I thought I'd best write them all down. Uh, obsequious? No, I don't even know what obsequious means. Slimy, I looped it up. Hey, Gail. I was going to ring you. Martin, is Katie pregnant? <laughs> Who's told you? So it's true. It's not meant to be public knowledge yet. Well, it seems to me it's very public knowledge. Who's told you? Craig Harris told David. 
Yeah, well, I was going to come round tonight. Um, put David on, will you? David, your dad wants to speak to you. Yeah? Well, you can tell him to get stuffed. Tell him I never want to see him again. David! I think this might have been better coming from you, Martin. And everyone who comes into my shop gets dedication and service. And these are the values I bring to my role as president of the WTA. Finally, I'd like to say a word about my husband, Dev. I know it's customary to attack your opponent, but I can't. He's a lovely man. He's a good husband, and I'm sure he would also make an excellent president. Thank you. That was a masterstroke, masterstroke. The girl's a born politician. Uh, I would now like to call Mr. Dev Allahan. Go on, Devendra. Open that up. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I don't really know how to follow that. So I'm not going to try. Except to say that at the beginning of the campaign, and I'll be honest, I wasn't sure that my wife, Sunita, was up to the job. But I was wrong. And now I can't think of anyone, including myself, who could do it better. Therefore, I withdraw from the contest, and I urge all my supporters, <laughs> all my supporters, to throw their weight behind my wife, Sunita. Still can't believe you'll be 18 tomorrow. My little baby girl. All grown up. Hi. Hi. Come in. I suppose I should offer you my congratulations. Thanks. Hog game is a bit of a shock, I suppose. Must admit. Oh, you well, must be the only nurse in Britain who doesn't know how babies are made. Where's David? Oh, he's outside cleaning up van. Right, well, I'll pop out and see him. Oh, shall I come with you? No, oh, you sit down. Talk to Sarah. Do you want uh, mm. tea or a coffee, Katie? I'm fine, thanks. Oh, sit down. Leave it to it. <laughs> Excited then, are you? No, I'm... Uh... I'm scared, actually. I feel sick all the time, and I'm scared that Martin might go off me. Why would he? It's mad with me for getting pregnant in the first place. Oh, and I'm terrified of the birth. Oh, it's got to be awful. Yeah, it will be awful. And I'm terrified that after it's born, he'll go off and I'll be left on my own. Well, then why get pregnant in the first place? Because I love him. I love him and I want his baby. I want us to spend the rest of our lives together. Okay. It wasn't planned. We're both excited about it. And I'm hoping time that you will be too. And if I'm not, will you muck an abortion? Look, David. I know it's come as a bit of a shock to you. Nothing you do shocks me anymore. Isn't that the sort of thing I'm supposed to say to you? I don't even know what you're doing around here. You obviously don't care what I think. Of course I care what you think. So if I don't want a brother or sister, what happens then? Look, whatever happens, I'll still be here for you. You know that. No, you won't. You'll be too busy with your new family. You already are. The results are as follows. Sunita Allahan... <laughs> Go on, Nick! No. Uh, 48 votes. Diggory Compton, 52 votes. I therefore declare that Diggory Compton is duly elected president of the Weatherfield Traders Association. Thank you. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Hey, get in there! 
Yeah! <laughs> How can I make Diggory a prisoner? He's just a baker. He's a very shrewd operator, be all accounts. Yeah, he's a fix. Sunita lost because she's a woman, an Asian woman. I think you'll find the result has more to do with his cakes and fancies than any policy. But that's a... Uh, that's a uh, gerrymandering. His banoffee meringue tart is enough to change anybody's allegiance. It is very nice, I must say. He got to you, didn't he? He got to you, didn't he? My vote is between me and the ballot box. I'm a traitor. Well, the thing is, it's nearly nine o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. No way. Do you think he's true? I'll take that phone off you in a minute. Oh, oh shut up. Jeremy just rang me. We'll tell her you ring her tomorrow. No, no, it's got really, really heavy. What do you mean? Put it this way. Now we know why Mum's been crying. Why? What's she said? And Mum reckons a dad's having an affair. No. Oh, look, one from Nick. <laughs> What's the matter? Nothing. You're crying. No, I'm not. I'm not. Oh, I'm just thinking how quickly you've grown up. And how beautiful. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Birthday girl. <gasps> Thank you. Happy Don't worry, I'm not stopping. I just came to give Sarah this, okay? Yeah, cool. <gasps> oh, wow. Yeah, it's a check. I thought you could get yourself something nice. Uh, Gail's been telling me your news, Martin. You don't believe in making life easy for yourself, do you? Huh? Well, I don't see why everyone's so surprised at me in case you're having a baby. Have some dinner, Mona. Uh, yes, love, there's some on the table. I suppose you want a lift then? No, Tom. See you later. Yeah. Coffee's ready. Better service than he gets at home. Oh, I thought you were Ian. He's going to be late. Thought I'd pop in. Say hello. Oh, lovely to see you. How are you? Fine. Fine. You? Yeah, fine. Uh, would you like a coffee? Oh, please, Black. So, how's the job? Great. You getting on okay with Ian? Of course. Why do you ask? Oh, I don't know. I just know how he takes advantage sometimes. Now he's a smashing boss. Why? He never seems to be home anymore. And when he is, it's like he wants to be somewhere else. He tells me he's working late, but... When I phone his mobile, it's switched off. And he never turns his phone off. He really has been working late. I'm sure that's all it is. When you've been married as long as we have, you know when something's not right. I bet it's the same with you and Kevin. Well, we've had our ups and downs, but we've never been happier. I do know how easy it is to let your imagination run away with you. And you think that's what it is? My imagination? I'm sure that's what it is. Another two pounds? Oh, so you're nice working then. Oh, thanks for noticing. You couldn't fail to notice. You're looking really good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna bankrupt you, man. Don't care. You'll be the proudest bloke in town with Shelley and Marms with Valentine's Day. Mm. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Cheers. Cheers, Keenan. I'd not reckoned on becoming a granddad for at least another ten years. Hey, what about me? You know, grandmas have them little round glasses and white hair in a bun and spend <laughs> all day baking scones. My grandson were going to be a mascot at Hillsborough the day that Wednesday got promoted back to the Premiership. Yeah, well, he might be a great granddad before that happens. Anyway, who says it's going to be a he? It will be. And he'll call it Martin, he's that vain. Hey, what if it looks like him? Especially if it's a lass. Yeah. Do you know, I had exactly the same conversation with my mum when I was pregnant with Katie. She was that worried it was going to look like you, redhead with a temper. There's no wrong with red hair. There you see, you're just like Katie. Yeah, well, when she does finally come to her senses, Plaid better watch himself. <sighs> Excuse me. Did your old man look very impressed at you just now? Yeah. See, the diet's the easy bit, as long as there's no chocolate in. It's going to the gym that I find hard. It's just so boring. That's because you're going on your own. You need a gym, buddy. What? 
a gym buddy, somebody to push you that extra mile, make you do that extra set of sit-ups. Mm. Really works. I do kid myself I've done enough when I haven't. Hey, why don't you come with me? Well, it's members only, isn't it? Well, Charlie's gym card's in the back, why don't you use that? Lots of lovely ladies in leotards. Oh, yeah. What's up? Justine's been in. So? She knows, doesn't she? Why, did she say something? Where do I start? Especially on top of what Gemma told Rosie. What did Gemma say? That Justine thinks you've got another woman. <laughs> I'm glad you find it funny. Yeah, well, I think the conversation ran more along the lines of, with all the hours I spend at work, I wouldn't have time for another woman. Gemma just heard us talking. And that is something to laugh about. <laughs> Ian, if she thinks you've got another woman and you're spending all your time at work, then that is where the other woman is. She is pretty sure it's me. Now, you might be able to handle this, but I can't. David. Dad's shot, yeah. I know. Hey. <laughs> well, you didn't turn into a goth and all. It's hard enough at school with my dad getting a sixth form of pregnant and looking like that and all. Yeah, all right. I know how difficult it must be. Well, if you know that much, why can't you understand that I don't want to talk about it? Because we do talk. You know, was that? Yeah, well, you've got her to talk to now, haven't you? Look, whatever's been going on in my life, I've always made time for you. It's as important to me as it is to you. Oh, well, in that case, then you're off the hook. Hey? Because you're not important to me anymore, so I don't have to be important to you. Come on, this is silly. Just leave me alone, eh? I don't want you touching me again. It was funny waiting in a pub for Sarah. Oh, listen. It'll only seem like five minutes before we're standing here waiting for Bethany. <laughs> well, you'll be standing. I'll be in my wheelchair, looking very elegant to go. Well, it'll be David next. Oh. You know, this business with Martin has really upset him. Yes, I know. Still, so, you'll get him through it. You sound confident. Gail, I am. I mean, look how Sarah's turned out after all she's been through. That's because she's got you as a man. Oh, no. <laughs> You're ten times better than I ever was with you. Well, you've more than made up for it since. I used to think you were a nice fella. You'll thank me for those extra reps in the morning, telling you. You're lucky if I can walk the way you push me. You've been laying hands on my lady. I never touched her. I just encouraged. He came to the gym with me, made me do extra things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks very much for the uh, membership card, by the way. I can't afford the fees and what this one pays me, you know. <laughs> you don't mind, do you? Of course not. So you started without me? Oh, look, what you fancy, my darling? Oh, I don't know. I've never drank alcohol before. Oh, oh you are frighteningly convincing. <laughs> Shelley, can we have a bottle of your champagne, my darling? Yes, Audrey. Mother? Look, if I can't splash out on my one lovely granddaughter's 18th. Mm. Me and your gran have been talking. Well, that's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, well, I know that you are officially too old to listen to your mother anymore, but from today, I insist, life is about enjoying yourself. Yeah, not too much, though, otherwise you make us jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so, for the next few years, make them about yourself, eh? Don't go settling down too soon. Mum! There's no need for that. But for once, I promise I will listen to everything you have to say. No. Oh, here he is, Scooter. Hiya. Got David said you're here. Oh. Happy birthday. Hi, thank you. Just in time for the champagne scooter. Oh, uh, well... Don't you like it? Never had it before. Oh, you'll love it, trust me. Well, so... Oh, um, got these for you. Oh, thank you. Your idea, was it? Taking Kieran to the gym with him? Uh, yeah. He said if I had someone to push me, it might help. Here is a mate, nothing more. Ain't too matey with your own stuff. It doesn't always go down well. Not matey with Jason. Yeah, but he knows his place. What? And you're saying it'll upset Violet and Betty if I take her into the gym? Probably not Betty. Well, maybe it wasn't such a good idea. Well, I believe congratulations is oh, about it. Thank oh, you. So, just as you start to drink and you have to stop, eh? Yeah. Well, no, apparently I can carry on. Oh, you mean Katie? <laughs> <laughs> Marty, Katie, this is Scooter. Oh, are you? Hi. All right, nice to meet you. Uh, I couldn't remember if it was Scooter who does skips, so I'll skip you. 
Right, excuse her. Martin. Oh, that's terrible, why? <laughs> <laughs> more a pint? Oh, yeah, please, Tar. Right. So, are you looking pint, forward please. to being grandparents then? Um, it's a little sooner than we were expecting. You're not expecting your Katie is. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, Kieran, I've left my wallet back at the flat, so I'll be back in a minute. Honest. Oh, yeah. Michael! Why don't we ask round in Rovers? Because I don't reckon we're going to find him here. He's got to be somewhere. You know where we can run? A few strides, he'll be halfway to Swinton. He'll turn up in his own good time. Have you seen Schmeichel? Eh? I'll see. I don't know what he looks like, son. Is he lost? Been gone for hours. Oh, he'll come back. One boy doggy, Schmeichel. But if he's lost, he'll be frightened. I'll tell you what, I'll keep an eye out for him and I'll tell everybody else, OK? We might as well pack in for the night. I'm not stopping. I've got to see Fizz. Fine, go. I'll carry on. He's scared of the dark. Glad to see your David reckons as much to this baby idea as I do. It's not an idea. It's a fact. It's all part of your plan, isn't it? Plan? I'm going to the pub. That's what kiddie fiddlers do. They're crafty. You know, I thought our Katie would have first, but then I realised. You were married to a woman ten years older than you. Uh-huh. Who had a little girl. You're sick. A paedophile calls me sick. I heard you, David. Never touch me again. Oh, get out of my way. And that is our Katie. Growing up too fast for you, is she? So you've got to breed another one. I'll tell you something, Tommy. I've had more than enough of you. One word from me. One word. And you're Katie. I'll never, ever speak to you again. She'll come round one day, mate. Oh, will she? You'll never see her. You'll never hold your grandchild. And neither will Angela. <laughs> You're wrong about everything, Tommy, aren't you? You're wrong in the head as well. Now shift. She's gone shopping in town with the grand and taken Beth with him. Mm. You alright? Turn that down, David. David. Hey, what do you think you're playing at? Dad's here. He's not your dad. Oh, grow up, will yeah, you? There's no need to shout. It's Saturday morning. I've got nothing to say to you. It's Saturday morning. I always watch my music programmes on a Saturday morning and I don't see why I should have to change that for anyone. Right. OK. Well, I'll just have to sit here and wait till it's finished then, won't I? Well, come on, stick it back on. This cat Dealey one, I like her. She's a bit old for you, isn't she? Oh, come on, David, there's no need for that. Look, in case it's escaped your notice, Mr Hilarious, before I was with Katie, I was with your mum. Amongst others. Why are you being like that? Uh, Earth to Sarah is having a kid with that... Child! Yeah, and who's been a child now, eh? Leave it, Sarah. He's entitled to be acted on. No, I won't leave it. What are you sucking up to him for, eh? Just cos he's buying you a gravestone. Don't make it right. Oh, you, you are know. a cheat! Get off! Hey, come Get on, off. you two, come on! Pack it in. Like a pair of animals. Look, for what it's worth, I came round here to say... <sighs> I came to say that whatever happens... David, look at me when I'm talking to you! But you both stole me kids. Nothing's changed. Everything's changed. Oh, so when you were born, do you think it stopped me loving her? Oh, how the hell should I know? Well, it didn't! You know, I thought more of you. I'll tell it to the end. Oh, that is so last century! David! What? 
so far around here, isn't it? I know. Is there anyone in yours? Full house. Yours? It's my mum, Sally. Sally? Oh, well, that means we can't do that thing that we said we were going to do, can we? Do you know what I mean? Because there's nowhere to go, like... We could always go to the Red Wreck, because that's where the Year 10s go at dinner time to smoke and do stuff. There's this iron fence and there's a hole in it, and if you go through the hole, you're on the railway track, so we could just go there. By the railway line? Hmm? Well, what if a train goes past? I don't think so, Craig. Well, have you got any other suggestions? Well, if we're proper goths... Which we are. Yeah, I know, but... Well, if we're proper goths, well, we'd want to do it in a cemetery. Oh, no, it's Gemma. What? I don't want her to see me. There's so much going on in my head right now. Oh, come on, let's go. Oh, hi, Gemma. Hi, Mrs Webster. Is Rosie in? Oh, no, she's just gone out with Craig. Oh, uh, all right. Oh, um, got some pop in the fridge. Why don't you come in? Er, uh, OK. Shelley! Shelly. Oh, hiya. Hey, I've just been down to the gym and there's this new weight class I think we should do. I reckon we'd just be able to squeeze it in between shifts this afternoon. Uh, no, Kieran, I don't think I can. What, are you washing a later or something? Come on! Look, Kieran, I've got to be honest. There's a problem with you using Charlie's gym card. I mean, you look nothing like the photo of him and, and they've twigged. I mean, they've phoned him already about it and asked him if he's lost it. What? I, I just think it's best if I go on my own from now on. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you think I'm out of order? I mean, it's nothing against you, nothing at all. So, your mum and dad are OK? Yes, thank you. Oh, you were thirsty. Better go. Thanks for the drink. Oh. Um, any messages for Rosie? I was just seeing if she wanted to come shopping with me. Oh, do you know, she'll be kicking herself when she realises. Are you getting anything special? Just some flip flops for the holiday. I've seen some really cool black ones in town and a black beach towel with death written on it. Holiday? You're going on? Yeah, next week. Who is? We are. We're going to Santorini, staying in a cave. So that's you and your mum and your dad? Have you ever been to Santorini? No, I haven't, but I hope you have a really nice time. I mean that. Ah, oh, that's so sweet. Bye, then. Bye, Mrs. Webster. Ah! Oh. Hiya. Oh, hi. Are we OK to come in? Yeah. Yeah, Dad's just hammered his thumb. Yeah. All right. Listen, why don't I pop out for a bit and, uh, well, get a bit of fresh air? All right. See you later. Yeah, see you in a bit. I'll stick the kettle on. Oh, David. What are you scared of? I'm not scared of no. Don't lie, everyone's scared of something. Well, I'm scared. I'm scared I'm gonna lose you. Because Katie's pregnant. You're not gonna lose me. No, you're not gonna lose me either. Okay? But. But what? Well, I'm the only one on this planet who's your flesh and blood. Oh, thanks a lot. Look, no matter what happens, you're still going to be my firstborn son, aren't you? Nothing's going to change that. Nothing's going to change the fact that your sister makes a lousy cup of tea, either. Excuse me, I used to work in the cafe, me. Yeah, past tense. Look, it's like when you start seeing a woman and you start going out together. You've got your mates, you've got a choice. Now, you either knock them on the head or you carry on seeing them. You make time for them. And I want to make time for you. How do you fancy going fishing next week? I'll see if I've got a window. When were you thinking of telling me? Monday, first thing. You seem a bit... No, I'm fine. Just a shock. Why? Because, obviously, I'm going to be running this place single-handedly in your absence. I mean, a bit of prior warning wouldn't have gone amiss. It's Justine. See, Justine's been drinking a lot lately, and I just... 
I just wanted to get her away from, well, from everything. Why is she drinking? That only means one thing. She likes a bevy. <laughs> but she's worried about something. And rather than deal with it, she's obviously turning to the bottle. We're going to miss the match at this rate. Do you know how much these tickets cost? Oh, just think, in a few years' time, Tommy, you'll be taking your own little grandkiddy to the roller disco. I might come with you. It's not a roller disco. It's an ice hockey match. Oh, he's only having a laugh with you, Tom. Calm down. How can you be calm when even your own kids treat you like muck? <laughs> Have you seen the muck in here? <laughs> hey, you. This is no laughing matter. This is my family I'm talking about. <laughs> Not that you'd understand that. Uh, hey, I have got a family, you cheeky beggar. Well, according to her, you and your dad ate each other's guts. Oh, and that makes your family different to mine in what way? Well, you ain't got kids and you never will have. Uh, says who? The National Union of Working Class Thick Twits found a member Tommy Harris. Hi, Sean. Do you want to know why things aren't kosher between me and our Katie? Er. Uh... Not really. My daughter, pal, should be going to university. Oh, should she? Pal, glittering career ahead of her. The works. But old man Platt, he's cleverer than that, innit? Career means she'll outgrow him, leave him behind. Prove that she's got more up here than he'll ever have. So what does he do, eh? Huh? He gets her pregnant, doesn't he? Up the duff. So now she's tied to him forever. Oh, look it up yourself, Tommy. Whose side are you on? She's not going to university anyway. Oh, you're talking out of your backside, woman. No, well, well, what would you know about anything anyway? Oh, just shut your mouth, Anne. You're doing me head in. No, she's not going to university. She failed a flipping exam, so I don't know who's talking What? What? It's you. You wind me up. You try the patience of a saint. She did what? Katie failed her exams. No big deal, but we weren't going to tell you because we knew you'd kick off. What are you saying? Do you see what I've got to put up with, eh? Say again. Yeah, you heard. You knew, and you never said up to right. me. Right, um, I'm going to make tracks. Does Platt know? Dunno. Angela? This has got nothing to do with Martin. Answer the question! No, yes! Tommy! Martin knew! Bye. Bye. Everybody gets to know everything in this family before me. First sign of madness, you know, talking to yourself. I'd have said that when marrying you. Well, we all make mistakes, don't we? Yeah, but we don't all lie through us back teeth. Think I'm a prat, do you? What is your problem? You! I'm gonna booze you! Fascinating! So, we're still going out? Yeah. And you don't mind us not thinking? No. Do you? You can kiss us if you want. I've got a funny taste in my mouth. Do you mind? No. No offence? I'll take it. I'd best get off. Oi! You cheeky little sod! So that's where you've been hiding? I've been on ten trucks all afternoon cussing you. You said you were coming to the ice hockey. Do you know how much you paid for these tickets? Eh? Well, do you? I was just coming. Get in that house. I'm sorry, Dad. It's a bit late for that, isn't it? Come on, shift your backside. We haven't done anything, Dad. Rosie's not like that, neither am I. Honest, we've not. You're going to throw your life away like your sister, are you? No. What are you? Craig. Craig. He's OK. He's fine. He's not fine. C come on, get up, get inside. What's the matter with you? He asked for it. Is he OK? Let's have a look at you, mate. Hey, get away from him, oh, you! Don't... don't try and have a look at him. I'm a nurse. He don't need a nurse. He needs someone to set him an example. Yeah, and what kind of example are you, eh? It's all his fault. Oh, yeah, here we go. Hey, you were the one that hit him. Your own son in the middle of the street. I had my Your own son. I said I had my reasons. What reasons? What reasons could there be for this? Get him inside and I'll tell you. I'm not talking about the art here. We didn't do anything, Dad. Honest to God. Hey, don't think this is all, lad, because you've still got some explaining to do. Leave him alone. Wait till I get you inside. Stop it! We didn't do anything, Mum. Honest, we, we didn't do anything, did we? No. You better go, Rosie. What did he think you were doing, eh? <sighs> it's 
fell out of my pocket and the next thing I know I'm on the floor. Right, let's have a look at you. I'm all right. You could be concussed. Just let him have a look at you, love. I said I'm all right. He could have killed you. You could have banged your head on the curb and you could be dead by now. Yeah, OK. Don't to me, Craig. Get off me. Your dad's right. It's all your fault, you cradle snatcher. C Craig, don't make excuses for him. He'd have never have touched me if it wasn't for you two. He thinks everyone's like you, but we're not. You OK? Get lost. What is the matter with you? It's not the matter with me. Go on, Katie. No, he needs telling. I'll deal with it. You don't like me getting pregnant. You don't like Craig making sure he doesn't get anyone pregnant. What do you like? The 14-year-old kids. And they're being sensible. You should be glad. 14 might be old enough in your house. We didn't do anything! Just get in, will you? Might take her home. Hang on a minute. This is my brother we're talking about. I am coming no, in. No, you're not! Yes. I'm going to tell that big brother exactly what I think Come of on. him. Come on. Speak to your mum. She's right. Well, she was slapping me a week ago. She's nearly as bad as he is. Craig, you can come and stay with us if you like. It has everything to do with me, and you know it! Katie, you don't need this. You're killing a baby, remember? Anyway, Craig's fine. Just let them sort it out amongst themselves. What are you looking at? Right, Mum, just tell me I won't be a second. OK. Dad's good to come in. Thanks. What's that? It's Pond. Um, well, short be a minute. Um, take a seat. Thanks. Um, what's it for, the pond? It's a present. Oh, well, that's nice. Hi. Hiya. What your present? What is it? It's a pond. It's only a week since you were getting our Katie a crack. I slapped her. Oh, she deserved it then, he deserves it now. Just because I had it in my pocket don't mean I was going to use it. Shut you up, know. we'll get to you in a minute. I slapped her, yeah? You actually knocked him out. Great parents you are. Shut up! So when the social services aren't knocking on the door. Shut up! Tom, that is a big difference. I didn't knock him out. No, he was just out cold on cobbles. Oh, for a second, maybe. Maybe two at the most. Katie's right, you could have killed him. Oh, do me a favour. Tom, you're a grown man. He's a 14-year-old kid. Exactly. His brain is still developing. Not fast enough to stop him chucking away his life like his stupid sister. I'm not like her. I'm not chucking my life away. Tom, you've got to learn to control your temper. I can control it. Do you think I didn't pull that punch? Oh, well, that makes it all right, doesn't it? Look. If I'd have hit him as hard as I'd wanted to, he'd still be flying through next week. I know what I'm doing, Angela. And I know what he's been doing with that little tart from across the street. And I'm not having it. Do you hear me? I'm not having it. I haven't been doing anything. <sighs> you must think I was born yesterday. No, but you think I was. You're too young to be having sex. I haven't been. <laughs> I'd like an explanation, please. For, for what? Hard grinding. Oh, how are you enjoying it? Well, it is a little colourful at times, but I have been quite enjoying it, yes. I was hoping to finish it today. I've still got about 100 pages to go. Last night, before bed, I caught you guiltily thumbing through it, Norris. Do you remember? <laughs> guiltily? In, in, in what way guiltily? What have you been up to? Nothing. You've read the book once. Why did you have it last night? What were you doing with it? Oh, uh, I remember now. I, I was just checking which edition you had. Mm -hmm. It's the edition which has pages 172 and 173 stuck together. What are you accusing me of? Censorship. That's what. Do you really think that I'm such a fuddy-duddy that I have to be protected by the likes of you? I can't believe this. Is this true? We didn't actually do anything. So it is true? I'm really sorry. Why didn't you tell me? I was scared. Well, after what he did to Craig, I was really scared. I'm sorry that I scared her. But, but when I saw it after everything that's happened, I just lost my head. But where did he get it at his age? I don't know, but I'll find out. He didn't get it. I did. Where from? It don't matter. We didn't use it. Where from? What chemist or trendy do-gooder hands these things out to 14-year-old kids? That's what I want to know. Who gave it to you, Rosie? No one. I want the name. No one gave me it! If you don't tell me, your dad will get it out of you when he gets home, and then you'll be in trouble. Now, where did you get it? Your handbag. Well, her glasses haven't steamed up yet. 
Half a banana. Half a banana. And a cup of tea with skim milk. Well, you know what they say. What? It's all curd and no way makes Jack a fat boy. Who says that? I read it in some slim magazine. Look, you're going to collapse. I had a big breakfast. Right, I'm no expert, but when it comes to counting fractions of banana, then it's getting out of hand. What do you think they was doing together, Sal? Blowing up party balloons? It's just bravado. I mean, they do all about contraception in schools these days. You know what goes on in the playground? And she's sworn to me that her and Craig, they haven't actually done anything. They had no intention of doing it. I'm going to go and have a no, word Listen with... to me, Kevin, please. <sighs> she's got some explaining to do, Listen stuff. to me. I have just given her the biggest telling off of her life, and Tommy has just given her the biggest fright of her life. Believe me, the last thing we need now is for you to go wading in. Just let her stew. There's nothing you can say that hasn't already been said. Are you sure? I'm positive. The fear of what you're going to say will have ten times more effect than actually saying anything. A few disappointed looks. The silent treatment, that's what you do best. Tell her you're too disgusted with her to even talk about it. She'll be mortified. Well, if you think you've dealt with it... I have. OK. I'm going to have a word with Tommy, though. No, what for? Because this is all his lad's fault. Well, I don't think so. They're both as guilty as each other. Oh, come on, Sal. You know what lads are like. I don't want anyone pushing nose Look, into... Look, Kevin, they've both been punished. Just leave it at that. If you go over there shouting the odds tonight, you'll only end up fighting. Well, I won't talk to him. You don't know the mood he was in. Tommy feels as bad about this as we do. Worse, he physically <laughs> assaulted his own son on the street. That's how angry he is about it. Just let it be, Kevin, please, for everybody's sake. Look, I'll put your tea on, eh? Yeah, OK. I'll see him tomorrow in work. Yeah? Can I talk to you? What now? I've been to see the Websters. I know. Look, er... Uh, I know it was all Rosie's idea. And it took some guts not to just blame her when I was having a go at you, and... I respect you for that. You're growing up. I can see that. And I suppose that I should be glad that if you are thinking about that... Well, then at least you've got the sense to... You, oh, you know what I'm trying to say. But you're still too young. Can you see why I lost my temper with you? You think I'm going the same way as Katie, but I'm not. And even if me and Rosie were having sex, which we're not, I wouldn't end up like her or Sarah Platt. So, no, I don't see what the big deal is. Unless you just hit me because you couldn't hit Katie. What are you doing? Nothing. Go away. Go on, what are you up to? Nothing. You've been raiding the biscuit tin? We haven't got biscuit tin anymore. So what are you trying to hide? I've got the dress on. I wanted to see if it fitted yet. Let's have a look. No, not till Valentine's Day. It's not a wedding dress. Look, I want it to be just right when you see me in it. I've got a couple more pounds to go yet. Go on, leave me alone. I'll be out in a minute. Suit yourself. Better be worth it. Anyway, Kevin's home now and I've filled him in. All right. What did he say? Well, he's as angry as we are, obviously. Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, you know yourself, it's almost worse when it's your daughter, isn't it? Yeah. And what you did to Craig would have been nothing compared to what Kevin could have done to Rosie. I mean, I've just had to tread really carefully, cos now I'm certain that Rosie and Craig actually didn't have sex. Oh, thank God. I just thought I should tell you that. I know. Good. Good. So we... Well, we probably went a bit over the top with them, which is why I think it's best if we just draw a line under the whole thing. I mean, it was just bravado. It's just kids just playing. To tell you the truth, I think the problem 
The problem is Oak Hill. I mean, that is a great school, but the way they teach biology, I mean, demystification, they call it. I found that one lying in the playground when I went to pick Rosie up one day. I mean, if Kevin found out, you can't imagine what he'd do. So anyway, in the end, I decided not to mention it to him, and um, I'd really appreciate it if you didn't mention it either, because Rosie is in so much trouble as it is, and I don't want him to know that she's been in my handbag. So I think it'd be best if we just draw a line under this whole <sighs> embarrassing incident and just forget that it ever happened. Is that all right with you? Suits me. Great, right. Well, that's settled it then. Good night then. Good night. Do you know today? Well, what do you reckon me and you go out for the day? Go wherever you want, do whatever you want to do. Just have a bit of a laugh. What do you say? I'm busy. Do you know what? I would have given anything to go out with my dad for the day when I were a nipper. Yeah? You were a nipper. He's a puncher. Wow, look at you. Oh, they recognised you. Why, what do I usually look like a dog? I thought you were going to some kid's tea party. I am. What do I know about girls' clothes, eh? Mm, it's around here. Maybe I've got a chip on my shoulder, but... when I'm going somewhere as Beth's mum, I just try and look decent, cos in everyone's eyes, I'm always going to be some teenage mother. So I just don't want to look tarty or dog rough. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. I don't think dog will look at you. I think fox. Mm. What's that then? Something scabby that goes through your bins. <laughs> Come on, Beth, we're going to be late. Oh, um, you know, just help yourself to the fridge and you know where the tea and the coffee are and stuff like that. I'll be fine. Today I'll mostly be planning stuff, not actually putting the pond in. Why well, take a lot of thinking about, does it, eh? Well, logistics and that, you know, nightmare. And who's this? Anyone seen Bethany? Oh, she insisted on wearing her wings. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I always said I'd never put my mother in a home. All those things you see on the telly, you know, hidden cameras. They tie the residents up, practically whip them. <laughs> I'm warm into the idea by the minute. <laughs> Still, it's good that we're like this, though, isn't it? Would you rather it was just the two of us? No, no, no. I'm saying that at all. Have it any other way. <laughs> oh, God, Ken, is it really a year since Amy was born? <laughs> I feel as if I've aged ten years this last year. I look in the mirror, I see my mother staring back. Well, I think your mother's a very attractive woman. Hey, you! <laughs> You're supposed to say, don't be daft. <laughs> Deirdre, whatever you see, I saw a glimpse that young slip of a thing that I fell in love with all those millions of years ago. Will that do? That'll do perfectly. <laughs> All right, Gaffer. My word, someone got out of bed the wrong side this morning. But, uh, he's already off the Christmas card list, so don't wind me up, eh? What have I ever done to you? Not you personally, that lad of yours. I tell you what, it's a good job you've already punched his lights out, otherwise I'd be doing it for you. Oh, and your rose is completely blameless, is she? I said, don't wind me up. Or oh, just leave it, Tom. The mood easy and he'll end up firing you. Yeah! I heard that, and that's true as well. I will. I asked a simple question. Listen, Tom, I know my Rose isn't completely innocent in all this, but she didn't get the... What's it, did she? The what's it? You know what I'm talking about. He's so full of... This don't add up, you know. No, neither do I. I was useless at maths. What is it with you? Have you got ants in your pants? Look, Tom, I don't want to fall out with you. I know none of this has got anything to do with you. Just keep your Craig away from my Rosa and everything will be fine, yeah? We want to be one, two. Bobby's girl. girl. That's the only thing I want to be. Whose party is this? Girl. Amy's or Grant's? Bobby's girl. Bobby's girl. Bobby's girl. Hello. Hiya. Been a break? Um, just. Drawing some plans. Oh. 
Good for you. Hey, Amy, listen, this is what Joshua bought you. Come on, Daddy, let's do the movement. Roll, 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 roll gently roll, down, down the stream. Merrily, 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 there are old people here. Uh, yes, well, there shouldn't be. Come on, Blanche, join in. I am fully at speed with the machinations of water-based transport, thank you very much, without having to sing songs about it. Don't be such a spoil sport, Blanche. Um, uh, Ken. Uh, oh, yes, Emily. Um, I popped upstairs to, uh, to powder my nose and I, I thought I heard an intruder in your bedroom. What? I, I went in, I, I hope you don't mind, and I found that Lena in there. Lena? In our room? I cleared my throat, she jumped, and I'm afraid she dropped her drink on your laptop. I thought you'd better know. Too right, I'd better know. She probably lost her way. Uh, yeah, she was probably rummaging through Dad's drawers. Well, thank you very much, Mother. For what, exactly? For inviting another over-sex septuagenarian into the house and ruining Ken's day. You so says the girl who's ruined his life. I beg your pardon. Well, let's face it, you've hardly been Snow White in the marriage department. This was supposed to be Amy's birthday party. But, oh, no, you didn't like that, did you? Because you weren't the centre of attention. So you had to invite all your little mates around and hijack the event. Oh, I didn't know you disliked our neighbours quite so much. I was specifically referring to Lena. Oh, don't try and get out of it now just because they're all listening. Well, at least they are listening, which is more than you ever do. I tell you, Deirdre, if we're that unwelcome, we shall retire to the Rover's return. Do what you want, Mother. Uh, actually, I should make tracks. You really do know how to embarrass people, don't you? Well, you've had lots of practice. You've been embarrassing me all your life. Mother, go to the pub and make sure you don't trip over a cobblestone. Come on, Norris. I, I don't think Deirdre actually meant us. No, she did, Norris. She's never liked you. Mother! And she thinks the markup in that cabin is criminal. Maybe we'd best go. I give up. You got one, mate? Hello. Uh -huh. Daddy, look. Uh Oh. Um, Mum, are you, uh, are you stopping here? Whatever. Great. Steve? Have you seen us over there? Oh, yeah. Leave him be. He looks fuming. That's his default mode. Always has been. Hmm. Oh, what a surprise. Excuse me while I just drag my jaw up off the floor. You are? Well, I'd never find you in a library with your head in a book or helping a blind person cross the road. I don't know any blind people, so lay off, Angie. Tommy, your tea's on the table and you've got bridges to build with your son. I dare you. Oi, Pedo! Is that you're looking at? Just go on, Tommy. Don't start, old daddy. Are you gonna listen to when you get in? Bit of Gary Glitter. <laughs> <laughs> you won't make a stand-up comic, would you, mate? In fact, come to think of it, you won't make much of anything, would you, because that Always gets in the way. I'll have you, Platt. Don't you dare, Dad. Don't do out daft, Tommy. Hey, we'll have no funny business, thank you. There's a pregnant woman there. Are you thick? Oh, you'll have me, will you? Like you had Joe Craig, I suppose. Who's the comedian now? I'd just say it how it is. Oh, and I'll make things up, do I? Look, I haven't got time for playground name-calling, mate, so... You can call me all the pedos under the sun, Tommy, lad. But before you do, take a good look in the mirror. Cos you're the child abuser around here. Not me. Are you looking for a smack in the face or what? Tommy. I'm not the one that knocked me 14 year old son into the middle of next week. Dad, why don't you just. And he's still go? walking the streets. Well, where's the justice in that? Martin, will you stop winding him so up? So you can call me what you like. You can call me anything you like. I ain't even started yet. But at least I can sleep at night. At least I don't need this Ooh. to blot out my guilty conscience and knock me out. You're going to get it one day, mate. Yeah? Oh, you're picking on someone your own size? Now there's a first. What are you lot looking at? All I wanted today was to make Amy feel special. And she did. I'm sure. And you know, I've been wondering all day why it was so important to me to make her feel special. Well, maybe it was because when she came into the world, it was so fraught with negative emotions that maybe perhaps it just didn't seem that special. No, it wasn't that. It's because I never felt special. 
My mum never made me feel like the prettiest girl in the world or the sun shone a bit brighter when I held her hand. She just moaned all the time and put me down. Nothing was ever good enough, ever. <laughs> you know, I, I once had to play a harmonica solo in the school nativity play. I know shepherds don't usually play the harmonica, but... So I'm stood there, tea towel on me head, dressing gown, and we're all huddled round the crib, and I'm supposed to play once in Royal David City, C major. And I felt so special. I was the only kid in the whole school who could play. So, I go to blow, and one of the other kids has played a trick on me and stuck a load of sellotape over me holes. So when I blow, nothing comes out. Just this sort of raspberry noise. Well, there was a deathly silence in the hall, and I was so terrified, I just kind of froze. And I looked up, and I see my mum sitting in the front row. And she bellows out, Oh, Deirdre, what have you done now? <laughs> I tried so hard with Tracy to put right what my mum had done wrong. I don't know. Maybe I tried too hard. I mean, look at how she's turned out. <laughs> she thinks she's too special. I just want to get it right with Amy. Actually, it wasn't a tea towel on my head. My mum had cut up a Sunday best hat and made it into a sort of skull cap because she reckoned the shepherds would have been Jewish. <laughs> that and national health specs. Not a good look. <laughs> oh. Deirdre. Will you marry me? What? You heard. Well, I'll say this for you, Ken Barlow. You certainly pick your moments. You don't have to respond immediately, but I must warn you. Forty years from now might be just a bit late. I don't need forty years. I reckon I've said no once too often. Yes, Ken. I will marry you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd feel much worse than this in the morning. Do you know, I seem to remember someone saying that morning sickness ain't that bad. If it's a boy. Mm -hmm. Could be an old wife's tale, though. Yeah, probably your old wife. <laughs> hey, good one. Mm -hmm. Could be right, that. Boy or girl, they've got a father to be proud of. Because no one has ever put my dad in his place the way you did. Mm. Not without him smearing them all over the pavement, you mean? He wouldn't dare. You wouldn't bank to rights and he knew it. The all he's going to remember is me humiliating him. And that's going to great. He's going to be itching to even things up. Or maybe he'll have learnt his lesson at last. Yeah. Now hold your breath. Wouldn't it be great, though, if he'll just leave us in peace to concentrate on the baby? Yeah, yeah, it would be. But let's face it. I've got about as much chance of getting Tommy off me back as Quasimodo had getting shot of his hump. What do you think? That it's a cloudy day in February. Why on earth? They're for the funeral, to shroud me grief. Yeah, to have a nose at what's going on, more like. Are you going to give me your opinion? Only I'd never tell myself. I mean, for one thing, I can't see properly. And it's such a fine line between Jackie Onassis and Roy Orbison. They look fine. Hello. Hello. Oh, I say. There's nowt like young love. And that's nowt like it. Mother, will you stop spitting poison? This is what you want, isn't it? I want a new hip. Doesn't mean I've got to be thrilled about it. It's about being practical. Well, so is us getting married. It makes everything so much less complicated, particularly on the financial front. It relieves me of quite a headache. Oh? Yeah, it's been a nightmare trying to make a will with Peter and Tracy to keep happy, not to mention Adam and Amy. Oh, don't forget your Daniel. And then, of course, there's Daniel. I mean, just imagine all the squabbling and resentment that's going to arise, however I divide it up. 
What's that got to do with us getting married? Well, in the absence of a will, which I have happily given up on, everything goes to you. So, nobody's got an axe to grind, and you can divide the money up how you see fit. And they say romance is dead. I'm filling up here. Hang on a minute. You tore up the will and then proposed, thinking you'd leave me to sort out the financial mess after you've gone. No, 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 it wasn't like that. You know very well why I want to marry you. I'm just pointing out the practical advantages. And as well as my estate, you'll have pension rights and there'll be a bereavement allowance and a bereavement payment when I die. Careful. She'll be smothering you on your honeymoon. I can't believe I'm hearing this, Ken. You've got it all worked out down to the last penny. Well, I'm sorry to muck up your calculations, but I marry for love, not benefit entitlement. The wedding's off. Oh, here we go. Round two. I don't think so. If only you could see how ridiculous you look. I could say the same about you and him. Forget us. It's our Craig you should be worried about. Instead of propping up the bar playing the hard man, you should be at home playing the father while you still can. Me and Craig are all right. Are you? I'm warning you, Dad. If you don't get your act together, you're going to lose him. Same as you did me. I merely explained the practical benefits of marriage, and with grown-ups after all. But then she exploded. And that was that. Yep, there's one thing I've learned in this life, Kenneth. The promise of a beautiful woman is like the neck of a corn-fed capon. Both get broken eventually. But you reach a certain age and you think you're beyond empty gestures and stupid games. I'm not so sure. Granted, I've had more than my fair share of knockback, but I know this. When it comes to proposals, oh, any woman worth having would rather have a bouquet than a balance sheet, however long it twos. Yeah, well, I couldn't put it better myself. I can't believe you made such a mess of it, Dad. Did you even mention the word love? Mm. When you're close to someone, some things don't need saying. Uh, yes, they do, even more. You know, it strikes me you're treating your wedding ring like your favourite old slippers. Something that you can pop on whenever you feel like it without making any effort. Tracy, enough. As a matter of fact, I think things have turned out for the best. I mean, we were getting on fine until all this came up. We don't need to be married. We never did, we never will. So, please, can we just draw a line under the whole fiasco and move on, OK? Schmeichel! Schmeichel! You look terrific. Oh, thanks. Far too good to spend the day behind the bar. Well, mm. I'm afraid that's where I will be spending it. It might, it might not. Depends on them. Uh, she's the boss, not us. And I reckon she deserves a nice, relaxing Sunday lunch. Well, I can recommend the hot pot. In fact, I can set the table, serve the both of you in here, and it'd be like a private dining room. Mm. Uh, that'd leave me on my own. No, it won't, Violet, because that's not what I had in mind. Come out for a meal with me. Come on, I've got the weigh-in tomorrow. You've got to eat, haven't you? Go on, persuade her. Look, it's my shift. I'm not going anywhere. She can't have your letter. One hour at the pizzeria, that's all. Well, it might be dangerous, you know, celebrating before the diet ends. A celebration will be later. At the best restaurant in town. Why should I wait that long to take Shelley out, eh? Well, I'd love to. Ignore but... the chart. One little pizza's not going to do any harm. Have you seen the size of him? They're nothing special. Well, they could eat three or four of them. Yeah, hence your chunky figure. <sighs> Muscular is the word. Yeah, you're gorgeous, I know. You pick the right pizza, it's got the same number of calories as a stick of celery and a packet of crisp bread. It tastes better, though. Listen to the man. Go on. You look fantastic. I want to show you off. You could talk me into anything. I'm along the road with you. Oh, well, I want with Sophie, then. I think not, Mama. So, <clears throat> did you even book that she's reading? Oh, look, Mum. Think girl, will not you? Everything all right? Yeah, fine. No problems? No, none at all. Anyway, I can't stop because I've got to get off to work. I thought it was a weekday arrangement. It is. Just so you know, Ian's on holiday. I've got the place to myself. I'm worried about you, Sal. Yet, yeah, well, don't be. Hey, girl. Going somewhere, Sally? I know where that's any of your business. Off to see a friend. 
I'm working. Does that meet with your approval? Oh, it's just that not many people work on a Sunday, do they? Yeah, well, some have to, or the economy has collapsed. Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, oh, Rosie, she's feeling better, is she? Yes. Back to her usual self. Yeah, anything else you want to ask me? Just wondered why you'd be off working on a day rest when you could be out having some fun. That dog's a flaming menace! It's my best mate. Yeah? Well, he's out of here tomorrow morning. No, he's not. Yes, he is. You're back at school, so he's back in kennels. During the day, you mean? No, Chesney. Boarding kennels. Like boarding school, he'll be home at the end of term. Mum! Hello, can I help you? Oh, I doubt it. I used to work here. Oh, really? Yeah. In this office. I'm your predecessor. I drove out, you drove in. So how do you like the place? I like it very much. And what's the job title these days? I'm Mr Davenport's PA. Yeah, well, I was officially, but he had other names for me. And what does he call you? Mrs Webster. <laughs> Surely not. Sally. Sally. I'll send it back if you want. No, no, you're all right. I like salad. I like you. Thin, fat, skinny, enormous, doesn't matter. I'm determined to look good for you, Charlie. Some women suit a lot of weight. Well, I'm not one of them. No, I'm not too sure. You've done a really good job, Scooter. Thanks, Mrs Platt. No credit where it's due. Yeah, you've shifted some earth, all right. It's the perfect size for the garden. And you're not angry about the sand in the house? No, of course she's not. Yeah. We normally have sand in house. I'm not used to children. I didn't know Bethany would do that. Sarah should have kept her out of the garden till the job was finished. Right, come on, Scooter, let's go to your house. Uh, don't forget Beth. Oh, right, yeah. Come on, Bethany. Come on, Petal. Oh, you love your sandpit, don't you? And your toys. I love Scooter. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's a great day out today. <laughs> Sophie was funny, you know, talking like Queen Victoria. <laughs> Yeah. Brilliant one out on the moors as well, wasn't it? Mm. To go to that pub again, you know, take the girls. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, of course I do. Mm. Four of us next week, week after, or <laughs> whenever you can ask Ian for time off. Yeah. Don't worry about it, so it wasn't your fault. What isn't? That woman. Ian won't blame you. I know that. Oh, forget about her. I can't. Look, Sal, we all have awkward customers sometimes. She's been in, she's said a piece. You won't hear from her again. No. Look, Ian won't be bothered, you know. I'll have a word if you want. No, I don't want you to. Look, he won't blame you. He comes up against her sort all the time. What? I just feel... Hey, come here. Put your arms around me. Give me a hug. Oh. Give it here or you're dead. But did you send him one or not? Oh, what will I have said? I love you. Right. <laughs> girls! Oh, girls! <laughs> Mum, tell us to give it here. Valentine's cards are just a way for cartels to make more money. That's what my teacher says. It don't mean how. Get your shoes on, both of you. Craig and Rose, sitting in a tree. K I S S I N G. Right. You have to go, baby. Just don't fuck me. I don't want a boyfriend, and the only reason why he's going out with you is. You read it? Of course. The poem? Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, you tell that Ian. I want you back home on time tonight. Hey, and no having a sneak preview of his holiday snaps. We should all have a look at them together, you know, the four of us. <sighs> what are you doing? Deciding what to wear for this weigh-in. That dress weighs heavier than it looks. This is getting daft now. Violet, I'm still two pounds over. Oh, well then, you should be hung, drawn and quartered. Hey, guess who I found loitering the hallway? It's the cliché man! Oh, no, <laughs> that's not a cliché. 
Why can't you teach this stuff to your apprentice? <laughs> Did Jason not get you anything, Princess? A card with a dirty joke in it. Oh, look, they're gorgeous, darling. Um, about this way in. Hang on, let's stay on the flowers a bit longer, shall we? Shameless cliche, man. <laughs> yeah, oh, they are beautiful. It's just, mm. I was wondering, could we have it tonight instead of dinner time? Well, dinner's better, then we can have something decent for tea. Yeah, but I need more time. All right, whatever you want. Mm. I'll <laughs> see you later. Oh, and there was one here on the counter this morning. He must have done it last night. Looks like he's struck again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got two cards as well. One from Todd and one from Sean. That's nice. Mm. Next year I'm hoping to graduate to straight men over 30. You see, this is obviously from Tracy because she signed it from both of us, but... It's this one. Oh! H multi cards. Well, whoever it's from, just say no. Hey, I bet they couldn't pick wallpaper. Rabbits were a uh, were an in joke with me and Karen. Well, you think that's from Karen? So what did this Della want with you? To go on about being his previous mistress, and that's what's upset you. No, I'm not upset. I'm just. Surprised? Surprised that a man like Ian's done this before? I just don't understand why he never told me. Why he had to make out that this was such a big step for him. Sally, affairs are full of lies. I mean, he's hardly going to seduce you by offering you a fourth notch on his bedpost or desk leg or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, well, I just didn't like hearing it like that. Yeah, because you do involve no, him. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Or you wouldn't be in such a state that he's three times you. Well, she was before I met him. Yeah, and you're still jealous. No, I'm not jealous. I'm just surprised at him. Well, it doesn't look like surprise from here. It looks like a lot more than that. You hurt. As anybody would be who'd been let down by a man they're too involved with. You're wrong about that. Yeah, so why are we both sat here late for work? Looks like you've got competition. Oh, don't start, Mother. I'm only saying, happen you were a bit previous knocking Ken back. Look, if he wants to run off with somebody whose envelope stinks of gin where she's licked it, then good luck to him. Anyway, I didn't knock him back. We're happy with the way things are, both of us. Right, who's stopping in tonight for Amy? Oh, no doubt. One or the other of them, too. They'll not be going out together, will they? As a matter of fact, I was going to take him to the Rovers tonight for a drink. If nought else, to get away from you. I'm going out. Oh, and take those down, Tracy. How many times? Ken, are you going to the library? Only I... Happy about it, you say? Push it, you know. Ain't no think you're taking advantage. What have you got there? Oh, a couple of shirts. I'm uh, taking you somewhere posh tonight. Oh, and how many shirts are you planning on wearing? It don't matter. We can afford it. As long as you don't go and get yourself sacked, you know, for coming and going as you please. Yeah, well, I might be getting a bit fed up in that job. What? You, you know, you had a bad day yesterday. No, it's not just that. Things might be getting a bit, you know, boring. <laughs> well, ask Ian to find you a bit more to do. Or, like I said, I can always ask him. No. Right. Don't interfere, Kevin. Look, I'm due a pint with a bloke anyway. I'll just mention it in conversation. No, forget about it. Everything's fine. Give me the shirts. I'll go and hang them up here. No, I only... Well, I suppose I just wondered where she was staying, either. I mean, if you've got a number for... Well, yeah. She's asked you not to. No, I'm not trying to put you in a difficult position. 
sorry. What, so if I wrote to her via you, you'd pass it on? OK, yeah, fair enough, thanks. Um, Eva, don't tell Karen I've phoned, OK? You've done really well. You obviously don't understand how important this is to me. All I'm saying is you look great, and you look great before all this and all. Only less stress. Sunita, I don't... Summing up? No, no. Well, the scale's thing again. She's fine, tell her. I've been telling her. She's a couple of pounds overweight. Overweight? Over target weight, I meant. Look, when you step on those scales tonight, everyone is going to be proud of you, including me. Those couple of extra pounds will be forgotten, you'll see. Oh, I've run out of Valentine's kisses, sorry. Hey, Steve. So, did you like my card? Oh, aye. That's two you got, then. I'm not sorry. Oh, aye. What's this? How would you know that? It's all right. I didn't send you out. I know it's trees are the wrong ones to bark up. So, how did you know? Uh... Hey, I'm being serious here. Well, it's a free country. So you sent it, did you? Yeah, what if it were? Well, what the hell do you think you're playing at? Messing with people's heads? You were only a cat. Next time you want to pull a childish little prank, keep me out of it because I'm not interested. All right? I would you say to here, and what is it about this modern age where everybody seems to be obsessed with dieting? Why can't we all be happy with what we've got? Do you mind if I go through and see her? Go where you want, love. You know, I don't understand women. Don't know what goes on in their heads. Neither does anybody else. I buy my card, book them dinner, and all of a sudden, they turn on you, tell you they don't want to know. Well, that's it. Last time I make any sort of an effort. I mean, what's the point? Hiya. You all right? Jay, boy, me old mate. Sit down, I'll buy you a drink. Nah, you're all right. We're going out, aren't we, darling? Oh, oh no, but then I'll be left with him. And I'll be left with her. Oh. And besides, you can't go until we've found out whether Shelley's got a weight down. Yeah, let's just stop here for a bit, eh? Well, yeah, OK. Cool. Right. Oh, it's crowded in here, isn't it? Right, you ready to go, then? Go where? Well, for this Valentine's Day dinner I've been promised. How many is he on? About seven or eight. Oh, you want to go now, do you? Only the way you was talking before. Yeah, I know. Well, I had a bit of a headache, but um, I wasn't sounding too keen. Yeah, Kev mentioned. But I've taken a couple of tablets and I feel much better now. Well, no hurry, Kev. Just finish your drink. You know you want to, Fred. Go on. No. You'll do a better job than me. No, no. Go on. I'll go on, then. <coughs> Can I have a bit of mush, please? Who's a mush? A bit of mush, if you don't mind. See, what have I just told you? Now then, <coughs> I've been uh, asked to announce that our much-loved manageress is going to stand on the scales and tell us all how much weight she's lost. Not that she needs to lose any, as far as I can see, but never mind. Uh, and then, she, oh, and, and there's some money involved. Ooh. Yeah, hundred pounds to charity. Oh, hey! Hey! Right, uh, I'm ready, Kieran. As ready as we're going to be, Fred. Right, and and the weight that she's got to get down to is ten stone. Ten stone. All right then, Shelley, love in your own time. Now she's standing on the scales any minute. There she goes. What's the reading? Just let it settle. OK, no more bets, thank you. Rien n'avait plus. Just read it. Shelley is weighing in at... Ten stone on the dock. You're good at your little fighter. Ah. 
I will swing for my mother and her mate. I swear I will. Been giving you a hard time? Yeah. And you can guess what about. Well, our daughter's been telling me to stop being miserable and to tell you that I love you even if you won't marry me. It, it was just the way you said it. And I made it sound like I wanted to save myself the bother of making a will. Didn't express myself very well, I'm sorry. Deirdre, I love you. You must know that, surely. Of course I do. And I love you. So? Look, come here. What? Get, you, come going? here. Now, this time, I'm going to do it properly. Don't be silly. Look, no, it's no, raining. Sit, sit down. down. Sit down. Oh, you're joking. Deirdre! <laughs> Deirdre, you know I love you. I want to spend the rest of my life caring for you. Will you make me the happiest man in the world by becoming my wife? Yes, of course I will. <laughs> Don't wake her up. What, I'm only looking. Anyway, she could sleep through the flipping moon landing. It doesn't feel like that at three o'clock in the morning. Oh, here we go. I'm a single mother. Feel sorry for me. I can't cope. Is that supposed to be me? Well, everybody else seems to manage. It's not as easy as it looks. Oh, no, it can't be, can it, eh? I mean, all that daytime television must be sending you insane. You should try looking after her sometime. Well, I wouldn't moan as much as you do. Right, then. I'm going on holiday. If it's that easy, why don't you take her while I'm away? How long for? Ah, you see, you're not that confident now, are you? A week. All right, fine, I'll do it. It's easy. I don't want to hold you to that. Mm. Right. Fine. See ya. Yeah, whatever. Right. You were out sharpish this morning. Working girl, got to be on time. We'd be around tonight. We'd a scoop. I'm out with Scooter. Seems to be going well. Yeah, OK. He's a nice lad. You seem to get on very well. Yeah, he's my boyfriend. Always chatting away, laughing. Why wouldn't we? Well, it's just that when he's with me, um, conversation doesn't flow. What? He doesn't say anything. Seems to be tongue-tied. What are you saying, Mum, that he's simple? No. I'm saying he doesn't talk to me. Well, why should he talk to you? He's my boyfriend. It'd be polite. Is in my house. All oh, right, so now he's rude as well as a bit simple. Well, I'll tell you what, Mum, we won't go to your house. We'll just stay at his. This is more fun there. I'm dead lucky, me. I mean, most bosses would call this skiving, but you know that I am poised like Catwoman. That phone rings and I pounce. Instantly oozing honey down the line, sending charm and minicabs all round Manchester. Oh, where's the witty comeback I've uh, come to love and fear? She set me up. Tracy Barlow has got me again, and I've... I've just walked right into it. I suppose you're going to tell me. She's got me babysitting for a week. A whole week! I mean, is there no end to the amount of grief I'm going to get off you women? I mean, when does it stop? When does it end? Shut your gob! Stop whining! I mean, look at your life and think of all the people who'd swap with you. <laughs> Why would anyone want to swap with me? Oh, let me think. Uh, you're your own boss. Uh, nice flat, enough money, lovely daughter, and you only have to get her at the good times. I mean, no nappy changing, no night feeds. You've got Tracy ganting after you and plenty of other women. The only thing that's happened is that your selfish and silly wife has gone and left you. And she's done you a massive great big favour. So get over yourself because I don't come in here to hear you mope. Gregory! Get back in that freezer and some lambs. Watching you is like taking a sleeping pill. Gregory born. Gregory doesn't know he's born born. He has to do some work experience if he wants to experience it. You're all in the hockey mood today. I slept badly. Night terrors. You mean bad dreams? Oh, worse by some magnitude. I dreamt I was squashed into a plastic tube and our Joshua, who had a beard, were running around saying, danger, danger. 
Grandad's created a vacuum. Then there were a terrible pop and that was it for me and sleep. Lou Sharp, the rush has started. Here he comes, two small chops call. I can always buy them at the supermarket if you prefer. Ignore him, Norris. What can I get you? I'm not uh, buying. Uh, I've been informed you, uh, you'd like to join our little card school. Oh, I thought I might have an and or two. Dad? It's only for a few pennies. They're only on the old age pension. So I thought I'd pop by and acquaint you with the Cardis constitution. There are? Well, you see, we call ourselves the Cardis because we were playing cards and I was wearing a cardigan and Emily said... Yes, 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 yes. Busy man, busy man, Norris. I'll see you in the, in the pub later. If I was a stickler, I'd say you'd already broken several rules. Oh, morning, Norris. Yes. How'd it go? He loved it. Clung on to me leg for a minute, and then he was off like a rabbit. He didn't even glance back. You don't see why he has to go at all. Well, he's got to learn how to be with other children, hasn't he? Exactly. It is a lovely nursery. I asked if there was any jobs going. There weren't worse luck. Anyway, I've got to go. I've calls to make. I'm going to see if my old agency's got anything. Hang on. Why are you going for another nanny in job? Of course I am. I'm not a housewife, am I? I'll see you later. There's trouble brewing there. I said there's trouble brewing there. Hmm. I bet they want to go to the boring part. Almost certainly. It's going to be pilgrimages to the cemetery where Robert Gray's doth lie and all that stuff. Well, I'll not be going. There'll be time enough in the cemetery before long. Oh, leave it out, Gran. You're fitter than me. What's the matter with you? You look demented. We've had a nasty shock. What's happened? We've seen our projected income from our pensions. Not good. We've massively overestimated our wealth. Barely enough to live on. Certainly no question of me not working. We are still going to Mallorca. No. You're joking! We'll be getting married round here. On the cheap. I told you it had never happened. Although even I thought the pipe dream would last longer than a morning. Don't be too sympathetic. I'd managed to park Amy off and Steve for the week and all. We wanted her to come. What for? What for? Because we wanted to have our family around us. Oh, she only squall all the way through the ceremony. So what? Well, what sort of holiday would I have looking after her? She's your daughter. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter now, does it? Because nobody's going anywhere. Get out, you're fired! And if you want some hard graft, you can go on call meets until Boris comes back off sick. I'm always happy to help out the family business. I'll start tomorrow. What have you done that for? She's no right being a nanny again. I said, it's no right. No, it's none of your business. <laughs> Bill, Bill, advert. Well, what is it? Don't hold out on us. The late Valentine from Karen. The other day I thought she was coming back, now this. Well, what an idiot. Well, what's she saying? I mean, what is it? She's not coming back, is she? Not according to a solicitor, no. According to this, we're um, getting divorced. Suitcase. Where do you think all the weight I lost went to? Have you got everything? I think she's brought the wardrobe. Swimsuit? Oh, oh, I'm going a minute. I'll believe it. You really don't have to pay for me. It's all part of the deal. Show would never have done it without you. Losing all that weight has done a confidence wonder. She looks great, and more importantly, she feels great. She's like a new woman. It's a lot of money. It's a bargain at half the price. <laughs> Now then, look after my girl. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> I will, and thanks again. My pleasure. I'll ring you when I get there. You have a great time. I'll come back even more gorgeous. Um, I'll miss you. You too. Mm. Go on, get in. Mm. Bye.
gold finger. <laughs> um, should not be gone long. I know. Guess I'll have to find a way to cut. Well, be honest. Honestly? Yeah. You look beautiful. Oh, <laughs> you always know exactly the right thing to say. <laughs> well, you do. Oh. Well, a March wedding. Well, that's a start, I suppose. <sighs> you could at least pretend to be happy about it. I'm saving it up for the wedding. New frock? Yeah, she looks lovely, doesn't she? Looks expensive. You'd think that with the number of times you two have married, you wouldn't be short of glad rags. I don't know what you want, Blanche. You've been hustling us into getting married, and now we are treating it like a wake. Let's see what the day brings, shall we? Ever the optimist. Well, no one's forcing you to be there. Oh, I'll be there. I wouldn't miss it for the world. You can open them now. I got it for Bethany. She's always wanted a doll's house. Do you mind if I join you? Oh, it's a free country. Oh, try telling Fred that the way this tastes, he should be giving it away. Well, you can always drink somewhere else. Um, Mum and Dad set the date today. I can't believe they're getting married again. Sorry, you probably don't want to hear about people getting married. Do you want to talk about it? No. Well, it's fine. So she's taking you to the cleaners? <gasps> Tracy! What? She's concerned, Steve. You're loving this, aren't you? I'm sorry. Why? You've got everything you want, haven't you? Karen's gone, we're getting divorced. I mean, let's crack open the champagne, shall we? You really didn't have to walk me home, you know. I'm a big girl now. Just pretend you're taking an old codger out for his nightly stroll. Thanks, you know. Me and Jace. Forget it. Who knows? Maybe you'll do the same for me and Shelley one day. Things okay between you two? Never better. Look, I know it's not my place, but is this about Sunita? Only earlier you said something about friends and them not being. Good night, Violet. Charlie. Jason I've... will be worried about you. I want you to promise me something. Go on. That next time we have an argument, if I try to storm off, that you'll stop me and I'll do the same for you. We've got to just stay in the same room until it's sorted, OK? Yeah, OK. Not that it'll happen again, though. Even better. Do you remember the first time pizza here? Yep. I stormed off then and all. And you said we had now in common. Well, we've got a little bit more in common now, I suppose. Yeah, and you said it was thick. Did I? Hey, I love. So. So, have you got any plans for today, then? I'm just going to finish these lyrics I've been writing. Oh, some. What's it about? Self-destruction. Oh, that's nice. Um, you know you ought to go out while it's not raining. A bit of uh, fresh air do you good. And do what? You could always go up the Red Wreck or someone and have a kick around. I was thinking we maybe both could if you want. If you don't want, that's fine. No, yeah, OK. Great. Well, we'll get off when we've had this, eh? Nice one. Oh, hiya, Kev. Come in. Uh, cheers, thanks. Ah, uh, look, I'm uh, sorry to disturb you on a Sunday. Just wondered if you'd do us a favour. Got a car stuck on the ramp. Got a hell of a job trying to get the exhaust off. Just wondered if you'd give us a hand. Like, I wouldn't normally ask, but I 
I promised Ian it'd be ready tomorrow. Why couldn't you ask Tyrone? I've tried phoning him. He's out for the day with Maria. All right, look, look, it doesn't matter. It's my own fault. I shouldn't have promised him. I'll phone him up and explain. No, go on. Look, we'll play footy when I've finished, I promise. All right. You sure? Yeah. Brilliant. Look, if we work fast, might get it done for this afternoon. I'm sorry to mess your day up. I fancied the Sunday on myself. Hardly seeing Sal this week, you know, with all the overtime. I'll be there as soon as I can. Cheers, pal. Great. Oh, what could I say? I feel sorry for the bloke. He's been had for a fool and he don't even know it. Oh, forget about Sally Webster and concentrate on your own family for once. And don't go letting Alan Cray down. Oh, don't worry, I won't. People are going to think we're part of some of all this junk he keeps bringing us. <laughs> well, Bethany doesn't seem to be complaining. She's played with that more than she has her own toys. Mum, she looks like an advert for deprived kids. Hello, love. Do you want some toast? Please. Don't you look cute? Mwah. Hey, maybe you could get her a swing with no seat to go with it. <laughs> Davey. Oh, he's going to fix it. Anyway, I think it's nice of him that he's got us something. Those blokes he wouldn't even bother. Well, I agree. I think he's a very considerate young man. But that doesn't mean that he has to bring something with him every time he comes. And he's very welcome without the present. Mum, he doesn't mind. Morning, Scooter. Uh, do you want some toast? I'm just doing some for Sarah. Uh, no, Tar. It's OK. It's no bother. I'm not really a toast person. Oh, well, um, some cereal, then. Uh, I'm not really a cereal person, either. In fact, I'm not really a breakfast person. Oh, I see. <gasps> just as well. How did that happen? Scooter, I'll have a look at it for you. He's dead good at fixing things, aren't you? Uh, I sometimes let my dad out in the shed. Shed? Yeah, he collects things, bits of junk, you know. Mm, just like us. <laughs> Mainly electrical. <gasps> Martin, have you got a moment? Yeah, uh, won't be a sec. Working on a Sunday. Instead of Gikevan. So, are you okay? Fine. I'm having a kick around with our Craig later. Oh, yeah? Just as long as it's the ball that you kick around. Very funny. Anyway, as I remember it, it's your boyfriend who likes to leave the boot in when he's playing. So is it your idea of Craig's? Uh, whose do you think? Goths don't exactly like playing football with their dads, do they? They love it. So will you, man. A few hours' peace away from funeral dirges. <laughs> Sorry about that. What does she want? Uh, the sofa's a bit off colour. She wants me to pop round later when she's awake. Well, I thought we were going to spend the day together. I've hardly seen you recently with all this overtime. Well, I won't say long. I couldn't say no, could I? Mm. Anyway, come on. You know, Kieran boy, you know. Hiya! Hiya! More relaxed, are we? Yeah, it was lovely, thanks. Oh, I've missed you. Mm. You've oh. only been gone a day. I know, but it feels like a week. Not that we didn't have a good time. It was brilliant, wasn't it? But it would have been much better if you'd have been there. Oh, you could have come as well. There were loads of men getting pampered, weren't they, Shell? Yeah. <laughs> Charlie Stubbs stretched out on a couch with a piece of cucumber in each eye. Now that I'd like to see. Rubbish. I used to go on them spa weekends all the time. For the golf. <laughs> Got something for you. Oh. No. Here. A toaster. Works perfect. Um. Is it from your dad's? No. A skip at a house clearance. Poor old fellow had died. Well, that's um. Very thoughtful of you, Scooter. It's okay. Well, I'll see you. Oh, the man's crumbs. Either that or it's mouse droppings. Finished. Yeah. Listen, I thought we'd just play here. It's nearly dark. We don't want to waste time schlepping up to the wreck. 
Okay. I'll just lock up. Feel fine now. Well, you were throwing up this morning. Just be quiet and let Martin finish. She did eat her dinner okay? Yes, she did. I am here, you know. Uh, well, she's not got a temperature. Hello? Uh, I think you're fine. She's gobby enough, any road. It'll be one of those 24 hour bugs or something. They tend to clear up on their own, don't they? Can I go around and see Chesney now? Oh! Oh! Ooh! <laughs> hey, that's not bad, that pal. Look, you'd be better with your coat off, though, wouldn't you? You must be boiling. Yeah, I am a bit. Well, go on then, take it off. Go and get the ball. If someone uh, had told you you were going to be a father again after all these years, you'd never have believed them. Oh, I know. You think you've reached an age where you can predict the rest of your life and then wham! Something comes along and turns it upside down. Yeah. I mean, look at you. <laughs> when we were together, You'd never have dreamt you'd been back with Kev. Yeah, I know. I never have dreamt I'd be this happy either. Mm. I've got everything I've ever wanted now. Good. How about you? Well, I think I have. This baby's come as a bit of a shock, but I think it's helped clarify a few things. In fact, I'm planning on taking her away for a few days, and while we're away, I'm going to propose. Really? Mm. Congratulations. Oh, great, thanks. But uh, just keep it to yourself, eh? I just want to keep it as a surprise. And I'd definitely rather Tommy didn't get wind of it. You spoil me. First the health spa, now this. It looks lovely. And all low fat. Just like the customer ordered. <laughs> it's taking you ages. Well, if you can't put a bit of effort in for the woman you love. And anyway, we want to keep you on track, don't we? It'd be a shame if you put the weight back on now after all your hard work. Well, I know. I know, and I'm determined not to. Hey! Why don't we weigh you before you start, eh? You brought the scales down? Yeah, well, I was weighing myself this morning. I want to keep in trim for you, don't I? <laughs> You've got nothing to worry about. So go on. Well, um, I I'm a bit nervous, to be honest. I've not been on the scale since the weigh-in. Well, no time like the present. Go on. I'll cover your eyes for you. Make it easier. <sighs> Well, go on then, let's have a look. Can't be. What? Well, I've put five pounds on. I've not been cheating, I swear to God. I've stuck to everything rigidly. Have you been fiddling the scales? <laughs> oh, Charlie! <laughs> you had me going there for a minute. So, you think it's funny, dear? To lie to me. Huh? That's what you did at the weigh-in, wasn't it? Got Sunita to fiddle the scales for you. No. Don't try and deny it. I know she did. So, you had a nice time then? Yeah. Well, it was all right, you know. I'm just going up to my room. Right, OK, well, uh, I'll show you when tea's ready, yeah? Come here, come here. What are you doing? Here. What is it? i found out who Sally's been having an affair with. It's only flaming Martin Platt. What? She asked him to come and have a look at Sophie, said she were ill, but only she weren't. As soon as Platt goes in there, Sophie comes walking out, fit as a fiddle. Does he come out? No, he stayed in there for ages. It's all a cover. No, but how do you know all this? I was watching the house while we were playing footy. It all fits. She's been doing loads of overtime, and so has he, according to our Katie. I don't believe this. Oh, I remember now. I saw them in the pub the other day. They clocked me. They looked dead guilty. I don't know why I didn't see it before. You're supposed to be making up to your son and all the time you're using it as an excuse to, to dwell on your latest obsession. It's not an obsession. And if it is, so what? It's paid off, ain't it? Don't you see, Ange? I've nailed him. I can't believe you're still lying to me. I'm not. Then how come when I tried the scales myself, they were way out? What? Oh, stop pretending, will you? Come on! Admit it, you were in on this all along! No. Honestly, if they were, then Sunita must have... But I didn't know about it. I didn't have a clue, at least. 
Um, what? Well, j just before the weigh-in, I did think I was a few pounds over, but I just assumed that I'd got it all wrong. Yeah, that's right. Try and wheedle your way out of it. I'm not. I swear. How can you think that of me, Charlie? I'd never do anything like that to you. You were lying then, and you're lying now. No, Charlie, why don't you believe me? You know what really hurts? All the work I've put in trying to help you, all the support I've given you, buying you your gym membership, getting people to sponsor you, even cooking you your flaming meals, and this, this is how you repay me. Charlie, please. You've not just lied to me, you've lied to Emily and everyone else who trusted you. You've let us all down. Yeah, well, you're going to school and that's the end of it. Okay. That was Ian. Ian Davenport? How many other Ians do we know who's phoning from his car? He's on his way. Come in here, what for? What does he want? Well, I didn't say. I'll be here in five minutes, happen will tell us then. Why can't I get it through to you? Martin Platt is at it with Sally Webster. Oh, give it a rest, Tommy. Any stick you can find to beat it's Martin not like with. That. You ain't his guts and all that. All right, I've got no time for him, but I'm not making this up. Platt is in and out of Webster's house all the time when Kevin's not around. Him and Sally are having Kevin for a mug. That's what you say because you want it to be true. Like I said, anything you can think of to hammer Martin with. Oh, you don't get it, dear. Platt is cheating on our Katie. It's her I'm thinking about. No, you're not thinking, Tommy, because you never do. Katie's having Martin's baby. Our grandchild. And if you try and cause trouble between him and her, she'll not thank you for it. Yeah, she might well even turn around and say that you've pulled one nasty stroke too many. Well, I want to be there to cuddle that baby, be around for it while it's growing up, even if you don't. Just wait and see. Whether you like it or not, I'm right about Platt. Hey, nice to see you. Come I on in. Care. Oh, Gemma, didn't know you was coming round. Rosie's knocking about somewhere, going through. So, how was Germany? Same as any business trip. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> Hiya, Sal. Oh, hi. Will you be looking after oh, my hi. interests while I've been away? I have to ask, are we still in business? I'd say Davenport Martyrs is still doing OK, yeah. Hey, look, Mum, Gemma's got me an egg dog T-shirt. I've got the same one. I saw him yesterday. I knew you'd like it. That's why I'm here, right, Gemma? I didn't want to give it to you at school. You just hear them all in class, can't you? Where's my T-shirt? You know what it's like, Sally. There are some things you just can't say, just can't do, not in front of other people. That's very nice of you, Gemma. So I said to Gemma, why don't I take you around to Rosie's house? So here we are. And since I'm here, I can drop the girls off at school. Save your job, won't it, Sally? That way she could be saving all her energies for the office. Am I crafty or what? <laughs> you might at least talk to me. It's all said last night, don't you think? I'm going to work. Charlie, please, you've got to believe me. I didn't know the scales were wrong. I didn't cheat about how much weight I'd lost. But you didn't lose it, that's the point. Yeah, but I didn't know. Your best mate fiddles the scales for you and you claim you knew nothing about it. Oh, come on, Shell, don't treat me like an idiot. It is true. I'm sure Sunita wouldn't do a thing like that. I think you might have got it all wrong. The only thing I got wrong was trusting you to be straight with me. Charlie, please, don't walk out on me. Go and talk to your so-called mate. Tell her I know exactly what you and her got up to. Hiya. Oh, morning, Katie. How are you feeling, you know, with the baby? I'm fine. Well, OK, you know, a bit of morning sickness, but fine, mm -hmm. really. Hey, Martin's taking me away this weekend to some hotel up in the Lake District. Oh, that sounds nice. Yeah, it's sort of log cabins in the woods. But, like, there's a hotel where you have your meals and there's a swimming pool and a disco and everything. Oh! oh yeah, I fancy that. <gasps> no, I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, well, you have a good time. Thank you. Oh, See you. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. Hiya, Dad. What's all the excitement, then? Martin's taking me away for the weekend. We're going to some hotel up in the lakes. It's going to be dead romantic. Oh, he's a romancer, that fella. I'm looking forward to having some time together. I've hardly seen him in the evenings lately. Oh, yeah? All the time at the hospital. But like Martin says, you have to have some fun as well, don't you? Oh, he likes his fun, huh? So this break will do us good. And like Martin says, we only have to pay for two. The baby gets everything free. How are you, Shell? Did you fiddle my scales? What? I want to know. Charlie said that you altered the scales to make it look like I'd lost all that weight. Oh, come on, it's no big deal. It is to me. You did. You altered them, didn't you? Well, yeah, only because I And here's me swearing blind to Charlie that you'd never do such a thing because you're such a true and honest friend. What's going on? She 
fiddled with the scales to make it look like I'd reached my target weight. Well, I'm sorry. I did give the scales a little jog. I mean, you were so close. I thought I was doing you a favour. You did yourself a favour. Charlie paid for you to go to that health spa, didn't he? And it cost a bomb. You conned him and you conned me. I trusted you, Sunita. And Charlie trusted me, and now that's all gone. Thanks for letting me know. All right, bye. Sophie's school on the phone. She's feeling sick. They want me to go and fetch you. Can't Sally do it? Well, it's me to phone up. Perhaps it's because they know that you're the dog's body. What are you on about, Tommy? We've got quite a bit of work on. If you vanish, I can't be servicing two cars at once. Whenever it happens, it always seems to be you. Well, I think if a kid's poorly, a mother ought to go and get her. Let Sally do it for once. You know, you might be right. I'll give her a bell, see how she's fixed. Oh, well, she said she didn't feel very well this morning, and I thought she was just putting it on. Well, are you going for a what? <sighs> no, all right, I'll go if you're up to your eyes in it. All right, I'll see you later. Bye. Sorry, Sally, I couldn't get back any sooner. Slister went on and on about problems with the planning applications. Look, Ian. I can't tell you how much I've missed you. Come here. I'll lock the door. We'll take the phone off the hook. No, you won't. What's the matter? That'll have to wait. Sophie's not very well. I've got to go and pick her up from school and take her home. Oh, for but a I'll minute. be back. I don't know when. It might be six o'clock. It might be later. But don't go home, Ian, because there's a lot we need to talk about. But, Sally, I... Come here! Hey! What the hell are you playing at? I want a word with you, Platt, and I'll tell you something. I'm not playing at. You can't... When I'm good and ready, I know what you're up to. What the hell are you talking about? You've been two time in our Katie. Oh, give up. Hey! I know you deny it, but I know, and I'm going to prove it. And when I do, I'm going to make you wish you never interfered with our Katie. Do you understand? Hey! You're barmy, you. You're barking mad. I know she is. You're a bit on the side. I only meddled with the scales because I knew how hard you tried with your diet. I knew you'd be disappointed. And you think I can't cope with some disappointment? Do you think I'm like some kid who's going to shout and scream? Well, no. Although, it's more or less what you're doing now. It's not that important, Shell. I think you're overreacting. Well, I don't. Because the way I see it, friends are supposed to be honest with each other. You don't do something like that behind a friend's back. All right. Well... If it's honesty you want, the main reason why I fiddled with the scales is because I thought he would give you a bad time if you didn't lose all the weight you were aiming for. How dare you drag Charlie in on this? How dare you try and blame him for all the trouble you've caused? Shelley, listen! Just go, a... Sunita! I think you've said enough! Well, if that's what you want. Sorry, love. Will you forgive me for thinking you were in on the cheating? Oh, Charlie, of course I'll forgive you. Hi, Martin. What's up? Oh, don't ask. I can't stop. I'm late for work as it is. Well, I can drop you off. I have to go by the hospital anyway. It's only five minutes in the car. So come on, you've got time to tell me what's bothering you, because I can see that something is. He's told me flaming Harry's. He's off his head. <sighs> what's he done now? He just accused me of cheating on Katie. Told me that he knew I had some bird on the side. Oh. Which I haven't, by the way. When's it gonna end? I'll never be rid of him. Not now me and Katie are having this baby. Let's see what you mean. He'll split us up before he's done. Suppose Katie believes these mad ideas of his. Oh, Martin, it'll be all right. You'll see. Come on, I'm ready to work. since you've been away. But like what? Tell me. Well, for one thing, I had a visitor. Anyone I know? Well, apparently you know her very well. In fact, she claims to know you intimately. Or used to. Until you dumped her. You were in her car. She was giving him a lift. They were talking. Oh, talking. You didn't see how they were. I can tell when two people are at it. Really? How? How? <laughs> By the way, they are with each other. Sitting close, leaning in, touching. I can tell. I am 100% sure that there's something going on between them two. There was. What? 
They had a fling ages ago when Kevin and Sally split up. Didn't last very long, apparently. So how do you know this? Does everybody know this? I think so. Katie knows. So everyone knows but me? Tom, it's not a secret. It's history. But it would explain why you thought there was something going on between them. Does it? So they used to be at it. Well, the way I look at it, that makes it even easier to believe they could be at it again. It's before I even met you. You don't have to justify yourself. It didn't mean anything. You don't owe me an explanation. I'm not your wife, <coughs> who's also been in here asking questions. Do you want a drink? No. Does Justine know about Della? No. Does she know about me? No. Look, this thing with Della was ages ago, and it was completely different to how we are now. Oh, really? How? Wow, I love you. Don't say that. Why not? It's true. I said don't. Do you know, after Della had gone, I thought, what a nasty piece of work I've got myself involved with. And then I thought, hang on a minute, isn't this exactly the kind of man I want him to be? A cheat and a liar, but a good cheat, a good liar. Someone I can trust not to let their emotions run wild and do something stupid that's going to end up wrecking two families. Well, that's right. That's what I want. So don't talk to me about love. I'm sorry. Besides, if Della's right, it's a word that you use pretty free and easy. I told you that was different. Oh, really? Because I'm beginning to feel like I'm in a long line of women, and when you get bored, I'll be out that door and I'll be back to scrimping and saving. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, what exactly do you want? Hmm? Well, first you tell me you don't want me to fall in love, and then you're asking me for what? Commitment? I want a bit of honesty. What honesty? You said it yourself, you're not my wife. I don't have to explain my past to you. You're my mistress. Just what exactly do you want me to be honest about? I want you to stop messing about. Stop the surprises. Stop calling me at home and winding me up and coming round to our house and chumming up with Kevin. Do you think that's clever? What? Do you think that's turning me on, seeing my husband and you laughing and joking? I'm doing what you want. Keeping things normal, keeping things safe so that we can be together and nobody gets hurt. Well, Della got hurt. How many more got hurt? Look, why don't you have a drink? I don't want a drink. She didn't steal from you, did she? I don't know what you want from me. I want to know what sort of a man I've got myself involved with. Oh. oh, you need to give me that attack. Yeah, you have to have the heart first. Oh, very funny. So what do you want? Uh, I've come to see you. You never come to see me. OK, I've come to see my good mate, Platt. Do you know where he is? He's at the hospital. Really? Is that what he said? That's where he is. Well, his car's still here. Yeah, it's on the blink. He's took the bus. Oh, well, I'd better get off then. No, come in. Seeing as though you're big enough to make the first move, the least I can do is make you a cup of tea. I don't know. Dad, I'm offering you a cup of tea. I still want to see Platt. Yeah, well, you can't, because he's not going to be back for ages. So you'll just have to make do with me. OK, then. I admit, you're not the first, but I guarantee you this on Gemma's life. You will be the last. Right, just got to nip out, close the garage up. I'll be five minutes. Where's my man? At work. So I'm in on my own, then? I'll be five minutes. I thought she took the day off to come and pick me up from school. Yeah, well, she's busy. She's had to go back. So she cares more about work than she does about me? Hey, your mum's earning money so you can have nice clothes and nice food. Yeah, well, she never has got the nice food. Well, I'll cook it when I get back. I'm not hungry. Five minutes. Come burn the house down in five minutes. <laughs> yeah, if you like. Matches are under the sink. Yeah, it was probably too busy to come home even if the house was on fire. Oh, good night. So what time's he back? Not for a couple of hours. So you're nothing to worry about. Who's worried? You. Look at you. Fidgeting and shuffling about. Sit still, eh? What did you want? Nothing. Hmm. So you just called round to say hello? Just came round to see how you are. I'm fine. Just worry about you. You don't need to. Katie, you don't know what you're letting yourself in for. I've got an idea. Besides, having a baby can't be that bad, can it? Otherwise, no one would ever do it. You've no idea. You've no idea at all. You can't trust people. You can't trust anybody. What's trust got to do with it? 
You mean people tell you lies? Like it's not as bad as what it really is? <sighs> well, I've made my bed now. There's no going back. Dad. I know I've disappointed you. You don't disappoint me. Really? Was it always your dream for me to be up the door for 18 and living with a bloke old enough to be my dad? But when you put it like that... I don't like making you unhappy. I never wanted to cause trouble. It's not your fault. And I know you're far too young to be a granddad. But this can be a new start. Oh, Katie, you don't understand. I'm doing something that makes me happy. I'm bringing a new life into the family. Is that him? No, I told you he's at work. Sarah said she'd come round. Hiya. Yeah, cover up, Sarah. I'd better get off. You don't have to go. No, you may see her. It don't feel right. Come here. Oh, that's a tight baby. Oh, oh <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya. Uh, uh, I'm just leaving. Right, I'll see you soon. And remember, whatever happens, we love you. Yeah, love you too. Ta. Oh, I've missed you. Mm. Good. This is good. Have we really got it all? Great families, great lifestyles, great relationship. See, Justine's sweet now. And if you can keep things cool with Kevin, we can go on as we were. Yeah, but for how long? Do you want this to end? No. Neither do I. What are you doing? Waiting for Platt. Oh, come on. She thinks this baby's gonna solve all the problems. She don't realise he's gonna wreck her whole life. Please, Tommy. I can't sit in the house watching telly knowing what I know. It's not what you know, it's what you think you know. I've got all the proof I need to smash his face in. Remember Craig, your son, the one whose face you smashed in just recently? And please. The son who you promised would never see you in a raging anger ever again. Well, if you don't come home, Tommy Harris, I'm going to drag him over here and show him what his dad's really like. I can't bear what he's doing to her. Tom. Love is in your head. Come on. Hey, Will. <coughs> Had a great Chinese last night. Oh, uh, where'd you go? Uh, Sally brought you back on the way home from work. That new place on Tile Street. Oh, yeah, I know it, yeah. She has to do something to win us round. She didn't get home till half past eight. Oh, I work in late, was she? Supposedly, yeah. I think she's trying to impress the boss. I hardly see you now. I won't stand for that. You should put your foot down. Yeah, well. She's not on a wage anymore. She's on a salary, isn't she? What, is there a difference? Of course there is. If you're on a salary, they can make you work as late as they want without paying you extra money. Mm. Hey, I happen I should get you two on one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and is she off and home late then? Oh, at least a couple of nights a week. One night she didn't get home to what? <laughs> Nearly ten o'clock. What's that van doing there? Here we go. Thanks, gorgeous. <laughs> you know it's, um, Devon Sunita's dinner party tonight. Yeah, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Are you being sarcastic? I hate Dev, you're not talking to Sunita. Neither of us are particularly keen on that company to open his wife. Oh, I think Danny and Frankie are really nice. She came on late again last night. Oh. Sally Webster. Oh. Second time this week, according to Kevin. So? I'm just saying, it all adds up. I wonder if you've got a suspicious mind. Why won't you accept what's staring you in the face, Ange? Tommy, that's enough. I am fed up with listening to your mad theories and nasty suspicions. It stops now, here. Where's the van? They're snowed under at the moment, but he said he'll fix it as quick as he can. Right. What's happened to it exactly? Well, I was, I was parked up at the lights on Malden Road. You're such a bad liar. No, that's the truth. No, it's baloney, Jamie. I've got a very important consignment that I need right now sitting in a warehouse in Leeds. Look, I know I screwed up, but you don't have to talk to me like I'm an idiot. No, <laughs> you see, you don't get it. I'm the idiot for giving you the job in the first place. Well, I'll just take your car. It'll be quicker anyway. You're having a laugh, ain't you? My car is going nowhere, and neither are you, by the way, because you, boy, are sacked. 
Do you want to discuss this in private? No, I don't. And don't go bleating a Frankie about it either. You've had this coming for weeks, because I knew you was going to let me down. You know why, Jamie? Because you always do. If Warren asked you for a job... Oh, here we go. Now, if Warren asked you for a job, you'd roll out the red carpet. You'd probably put him in charge. But me, I'd drive the van. Yes, into the back of other vans. Once. Look, you've been skiving since the day you started working for me. If I weren't your dad, you'd have been down the road months ago. Trail of Kevin, I can just about forgive. This new Sally who doesn't know right from wrong. It's not a case of right from wrong. It's not the Sally Webster I know. You're turning into somebody else. Good. No, Sally. Bad. Wrong. Selfish. Stupid. Why can't you see it? You're the one with a simple approach to life, not me. Chop them clothes in the canal, Sally. Oh. End this sordid affair. He's your husband's friend. I'm going. I'll see you later. Martha wants your lights best with a pink highlighter. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it was a bit on the expensive side. Yeah, you're right. So, a second choice is in green and a third choice is in blue. Oh, blimey. You've been through her, haven't you? I'm sure she'll love it, whichever one you choose. Yeah, me too. Hey, and thanks for your help. Cheers. See ya. See ya. Hi, Sal. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Hey. Are you sure? It's nothing. I'm just being stupid. I'm not. What is it? Not my flat's here. Come for a coffee if you want. I don't want to put you to any trouble. It's no trouble. Come on. Up your bum. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. oh. All right. Uh, that's close enough. Oh. No fellas allowed. Oh, don't be stupid. You can stay where you are, can I? Of course you can. We're only having a drink. Mm. Tell you what, I'll go and stand over there. And I promise I won't look over, no matter how rowdy it gets. It won't get rowdy. Yeah, <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, how considerate was that, eh? You know, he's the most considerate man in the world. What do you think? Oh, that is lovely. Yeah, I think so. Hiya. It's lovely. I'll to see you. Oh, hiya, Sally. Hi. Hey, all right. Mm. I'm not expecting you for another half hour. Oh, library was packed. I thought I'd come home and work. But I'd better get off now. Oh, not on my account. No, no, I've got to go back and see the girls. Well, hang on, I'll, uh, I'll come and see you out. Oh, right. Thank you, Martin. Ah, you're welcome. Oh, I really enjoyed that. So, I've not had a night like that for years. We might all do lunch tomorrow. That's nice. Me and Sunita had a bit of a loving. Did you? Well, we can't stay angry with each other for long. We've been through too much. Sorry, I can't listen to this. I'm going out. What I said now? Nothing. What's the matter? Can't I enjoy myself without you? Not with those two cackling away like a pair of witches. They didn't do you any harm. I knew you didn't want me to go out for a drink with them. Why don't you just come out and say it? I just think there are better people out there for you to be friends with, that's all. They're poison, those two, both of them. But they're really nice. I like them. Yeah. Well, that just shows how naive you are. Hey! What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. It doesn't matter. Charlie! Nothing! Look. I promised myself I'd never say anything. Charlie. Frankie and Sunita, you were in the loo, they were out of the bar, yapping. They didn't know I was right behind them. What did they say? Sunita. She said, um... She said that she, you, might have lost weight, but not enough to get away with what she's wearing tonight. Where have you been? I was just about to send a search party out for you. Where's Craig? <laughs> He's at footy practice. Right, just sit down a minute, will you? I know, I'll just get... No, Tom, just sit down. And promise me that whatever I'm about to tell you, you won't just kick off. Yeah, OK. No, I mean it because we've got to decide together what to do for the best. What's going on? You were right about Sally and Martin. They're having an affair. I've just seen them together. And I heard her and Gail having a row about it. I'm gonna kill him. 
The M56 is chalky, so I don't know what time I'll be back, lads. No problem, Gaffer. We can manage it, Tom. Right, two's down. Get along, come on. Hey, thanks for the old detective work. She didn't twig? Nah, completely oblivious. I'm going into town and to buy the ring. She'll love it. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> see ya. Kettle's on, mate. Hey, can I borrow your wrench? Yeah. Chief, stop my daughter, would you? Ah! Don't try to deny you've been seen you in your dirty little ah! Tell me no, come on, leave it. I said no. You'd be found out by the game, don't me? Come on, get back to the guys. Shift that on. What the hell's all this about? I can't work. Not today. I'm going home. And what am I supposed to tell Kev? Tell him what you want. I don't care. You all right? Uh, no. Just been jumped on by a flaming lunatic. Look, do you want to live to the hospital or something? No. It's only a split lip. Sure. Yeah, thanks. You're upset, aren't you? I'm upset because you were upset. I was angry. I'm glad you stuck up for me. I didn't really, though, did I? I kept my gob shut. Yeah, but you're on my side. I'm always on your side. <laughs> I know. Anyway, I might have got it all wrong. Hardly. Maybe I misheard. Charlie, you've got ears like a bat. Mm, maybe it was only meant as a joke. Can you see the funny side? No. Or would Sunita, if I was bitching with Frankie behind her back, because thieves those two all night. Did you notice? Six months ago, they were daggers drawn. Look, I'd hate it if you and Sunita fell out again. Well, we have. Or maybe it's not as simple as that. Maybe we're just drifting apart. Oh, don't say that. I wish I'd never told you now. You know, when we were on our own last night, she was saying what good pals we were. I mean, how hypocritical is that? We are good pals. You still could be. Doesn't undo all the good times. Anyway, you never made a catty remark? Not about Sunita. I never would. Yeah, well, that'll be Frankie egging her on. That'll be it. <laughs> what if she was egging Frankie on? She'd be mortified if she could hear you now. This has changed everything. Mm, that would be quick. I thought you were off into town. Yeah, I bumped into someone on the way. Oh, yeah, who? Your flaming dad. Oh, my God! When? Why? Oh, you poor baby, we've got to get you looked at. No, that's all right. It's only a cut lip. <sighs> Tyrone stopped him before he could really get stuck in. I don't get it. Why would he do this to you? He was yelling something about me, cheating on you. You what? That's ridiculous. Why? Well, I don't know. It didn't make a lot of sense. Here, will you let me do oh, that? get off. Yeah. Fine. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, it's not your fault, is it? Oh, I can't believe it. He was really nice to me the other day. I thought he was finally starting to accept us. Yeah, well, full marks for the element of surprise. He can't do this to you, Martin. He can't do it to us. I won't let him. <sighs> it doesn't matter what I say, does it? He's in one ear and out the other. I just lost it. I'm sorry. I've made everything ten times worse. Do you know that? Yeah. Yeah, now he's a victim and Katie won't believe a word we say. Mum! Dad, are you in there? Go on, let her in. Hi, hello. Have you seen what my dad's done to mine? Where is he? Is he in here? Oh. And I thought you changed. I thought at last, finally, he started behaving like a normal human being. But no, you are still a nutcase. Wandering around, lashing out at anyone that gets in your way. You you are drugging up and chugging in a padded cell. Oh, calm down. Get for... well, I've got what was coming to him. You are a thug. You're an animal. Any father would have done the same. Don't you dare pretend that you did it to protect me. My partner. The father of my baby is covered in blood. He's cheating oh, on you, God. Katie. He's seen somebody behind your back. I can't believe even you would stoop that low. Oh, Come on, Stop, get up. Katie! You ain't making it up, love. It's the truth. I get it. This is some weird conspiracy you cooked up between you. I've always backed you and Martin. I wouldn't say this if it weren't true. Well, I didn't believe it at first, did I, Tom? No. Well, I'd have caught your dad, accused him of making it all up, until I saw the proof. What proof? I overheard a conversation between Gail and Sally. What conversation? When? In the pub yesterday. Hang on. Are you saying Martin's having an affair with his ex-wife? 
Because, listen, I've been there. They get along. It's not got Gail. Kids. He's having the affair with... It's Sally. Sally? S Sally Webster? Gail, we're having a go at her. Telling her to end it. Telling her to go home to her husband. End it with Martin. She said, end it with Martin. He's Kevin's she? friend. That's what she said. Who else could it be? It all adds up. We've seen them together loads of times, both of us. The, they went into your flat yesterday afternoon, before you came home, and... Uh, when he was seeing her out... What? It was just the way he was saying goodbye. What? Did he have his tongue down her throat? Oh, what? Katie, the way he hugged her... You, you just know when a couple are a couple. Kevin's always banging on about Sally never being at home. In fact, I knew she were having an affair when that business with the condom happened. Eh? When Craig got caught with a condom, Rosie said she got it out of her mum's bag. But when I spoke to Sally about it, she begged me, begged me not to tell Kevin about it. Sally's got condoms, big deal. No. Sally's got a secret, and I found out what it is. No. He wouldn't do this to me. He loves me. We're having a baby. Sweetheart, I know, but... I, unless I were absolutely certain, I wouldn't say this. OK. I've got a grudge. But not your mum. Your mum won't make someone up like this. You're wrong. You must be. You've got the wrong end of the stick. End your sordid affair and go home to your husband. Those were Gail's exact words. <laughs> you two joined at the hip now. Oh, we were just comparing notes on who's got the biggest headache. She taught me to go back to hers for a nightcap. I didn't open the shop till nine. Can you believe it, Shout! I couldn't move. <laughs> Ooh, don't expect any sympathy from me. <laughs> we had such a laugh, though, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. yeah. Whose expense? Mm? What's going on, Shell? What's all this? You know, thing, it just seems that you both had a much better time after you left here. How? Oh. They're not going well. Read them letters on the fridge for me. You are? The ones at the top. Can you see them? Yeah, of course. A and C, B, C. Are they clearer, Fuzzy? They're clear. See, I can barely make them out from here. In fact, I can only see them clearly. No. Honest? Is that why they turned you down? They didn't even interview me. I was stood outside waiting, and this chap comes over and he says, you stood very close to that notice board. I says, what business is it of yours? He says, I'm Andy Richards, head of personnel. Oops. He made me take an eye test before he'd let me do the actual interview. And I failed it. No, you've got lovely eyes. They don't work very well, though, Ashley. Hello, Leanne. What can I do for you? I've come to ask you a tiny, teeny, weeny little favour. Oh, I think I know what's coming, yeah. Oh, give Jamie his job back. Well, what about that? I must be telepathic. Right, now it's your turn to read my mind. Shame on you, Danny. I'm your son's girlfriend. I'm not accusing me of having improper thoughts, are you? Because nothing could be further from the truth. Oh, he's really sorry. I know he is. Really? Well, then why didn't he come and tell me that himself? Male pride. Bone idol, more like. He really loves working with you. He really looks up to you. So do I. Please, Danny. Do you honestly think you can get Jamie's job back by coming here and flirting with me? Go on in, Cheeky. Turn him to be here at half eight in the morning. <laughs> Go on. Hey! What's that for? You know why. What? Don't you dare deny it! Don't you dare try and deny it! You know exactly why my dad thumped you! What are you talking about? Why? What's he said? Oh, don't come the innocent. You've been seen together by everybody but me, it sounds like. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> don't touch me! Get away from well, me! Will you please tell me what I meant to have done? I am such an idiot. Why didn't I see it? It was obviously going on right under my own nose. No wonder you jumped a power when I walked in last night. Uh, who? It's early, I would have probably caught you at it. Who are you talking about here? <laughs> not Sally. You'd better not have been doing it in our bed. Were you, were you in our bed? How could you possibly think there's something going on between me and Sally? Oh, I hope you both right hey, help I you! I ain't gone, but you. Come here. Come here and sit down. <laughs> Blimey. I think your dad had a vivid imagination, but this one just about takes the flaming biscuit. Not just my dad. 
It's my mum as well. They've seen you together. Well, of course they have, yeah, in the street, in the pub. We're mates. You're more than mates. God, I feel sick. That bitch, I'll kill her! Hey! Get that ain't done, will ya? We went out for a few weeks, not even that, years ago. <laughs> it's a ridiculous idea. It all adds up. Why didn't I see you? She came round for a chat, oh. OK? She was upset. Look at your faces when I walked in. You weren't just chatting. But OK, fair enough. If you must know, we were looking at a jewellery catalogue. Engagement rings. In fact, I was off to get you on this morning till some thug jumped on me back. All oh, right, so you want to marry me all of a sudden? You've been banging on about nothing else for months. Yeah, and you've been telling me it's the last thing you want to do. Well, now I know why. I had come round to the idea. Oh, lie. You don't want to marry me. Look, talk like this. I'm not sure I want to carry on going out with you. Why oh, didn't listen to my dad, why? Everything he said about you. You use me. No. You use me as a cover for your seedy little affair with that blonde bitch. Katie, you've got it all wrong. And what's worse, you won't even admit it. There's nothing to admit to. Oh, I give up with you. <laughs> You'd be in the gutter if it weren't for me. Why? What do you mean? Get me a drink and I'll tell you. I bet they had a really good bitch about me after they'd left. Good tell. You shouldn't take these things to heart. Oh, well, you meant it, then. What does it look like? Look, Katie, this is ridiculous. Why would I want an affair with Sally Webster? I know you fancy her. You always have done. No, I fancy you. Yeah, but you always treat me like a kid. We're meant to be equal partners. Oh, don't make me laugh. You don't take me seriously. You don't respect me. How could you? We're having a baby together. Yeah, but not because you want it. You were furious when you found out. I was shocked. Yeah, and if it were up to you, there'd be no baby on the way. No marriage proposals. As far as you're concerned, it's all just a bit of fun. Oh, fun? What, you think this is fun? Something to tide you over till a real woman comes along. So let's get this straight, then. At the same time as going out with you, right, I'm having a proper grown-up relationship with Sally Webster, right? You've done it in the past. Sally, the married woman. Yeah, it all adds to the thrill of it. Do you know what? It strikes me that if anyone's belittling this relationship, not taking the partner seriously, it's you. I've always been more into you than you were me. I might have wanted things to move at a different pace. Yeah, OK. And you've dragged your heels. Well, now we know why. Katie, how can you talk like this? Is it your hormones? Oh, don't you dare! Look, I'm sorry, Katie, right? But your dad... Mum and Dad. Your dad. He comes up with some complete cock and bull story about me and some other woman, and you swallow it, hook, line and sinker. They had tons of evidence. My mum heard this conversation between Gail and Look, Sally. I don't care, right, what anybody heard or saw. All I care about, right, is the fact that I've told you it's not true. And you don't believe it. They saw you with their own eyes. I saw you. Katie, you believe what you want, cos I've just about had it up to here. Come here. I'll shut your eyes. And pick a brochure, any brochure. Brochure? Just pick one. Caribbean. Good call. Cool. That's where we'll go, then. When? Next week. Next week? Yeah, that job I've got in Chorley's been booked out for a couple of weeks, so I thought we might as well jet off somewhere. Give over. I mean it. Perfect chance for you to show off that beautiful body of yours. <laughs> I said we should have gone with her. Just leave it, Tommy. Yeah. And let him wriggle his way out of it, you mean? Look, she knows the truth now. What she chooses to do about it is her business. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Are you all right? Come on. I've left him. Come here. <laughs> There's nothing quite like it, is it? The grace, the power. How long have you had it? Oh, well, I had some when I was a child, only I recently started collecting again. Now, this one's called the Seagull. Now, she was the very first locomotive I ever travelled on. I remember standing on the platform, just, just staring at her. Beautiful. And then my mother said, shut your mouth, Norris, you look like you're catching flies. <laughs> I'm the same with trams. I can stand for hours in the Science Museum. I don't think Ashley understands. Well, I'm the same. I, I've only got to reach out and touch the footplate and 
I, I'm transformed. That gush of steam across your feet, and it used to rise up your legs, and right up until you, well, you just disappeared into it. The smell of the thickness, the, oh, the toot, toot, and then the chung, 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 chung. It's the freedom, isn't it? Mm. The romance, the adventure. <laughs> oh, all, all I ever wanted to do was drive the seagull. You'll have to come on me tram when I get the job. I know it won't be the same as the seagull. I, I, I won't be able to drive it, would I? No. <laughs> oh, but it is magical, Maurice. Eh? I came back on the tram yesterday, you know, after my interview. And you don't just drive through the streets. You go over all the old railway bridges, looking down on the buildings, chimneys reaching up from below. And I just know that when I'm driving, when I'm at the front looking out, it'll be like a magic carpet. Hiya, love. Did you sleep? A bit. Do anything to eat? Yeah, get your sandwich. Ham and pickle, all right? Yeah. Hey, your dad's gone to the shops for me. Mm -hmm. Where's Craig? Uh, sent him out. Well, me and your dad. Well, we thought it best not to tell him about Martin. It didn't seem any of his business. Mm, wish it wasn't any of my business. Do you think I should go see him? Would you want to see him? Not really. Then don't. So you don't think I'm being childish, refusing to see him? Shouldn't I be going round and talking? Katie, you're upset. You've got every right to stay away from him. He's betrayed you. And if he thought as much of you as you do of him, he'd be round here now, demanding to see you and begging forgiveness. He doesn't care about me, does he? Well, do you want me honest opinion? Yeah. You won't like it. Go on. I think he did care about you. In the beginning, but not now. I always knew this would end in your tears. And I might not be the one lashing out and shouting the odds over the months, but I were never happy with you and Martin. Mm. No, no, it's not just the age gap, love, and it is a huge gap. But no, it's the way he is with you and his old family. Whatever he does, whoever he hurts, he always lands on his feet. <laughs> The minute he saw you, he wanted you. And he made damn sure he got you. Oh, it makes me so angry. And now he's bored with you, he's off. Wrecking another marriage, ruining relationships. Sometimes I wish I were like your dad, because there's nothing more than I'd love than to go around there and kick the living daylights out of him. <sighs> OK, you've got to see him for what he is. I do. It's over. Happy birthday, dear Rita. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Dad. Hey. Hey. Oh. Well, that's it. Go on, have a good cry. Let it oh. all out, eh? <laughs> Your dad's here for you. Hey, I'm always going to be here. You know that, don't you? <laughs> they give them you there and then? Yeah, which is great, cos it means I can get onto the tramp people first thing. Come on, then. Let's have a scan. Hang on a minute. What do you think? Blimey. You ate them. Well, that used to him. Uh, um, yeah, it, 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 it's going to take so. <coughs> some getting used to. That's awful. Be prepared for dirt to be slung in your direction. <sighs> I tried to tell her it was a load of rubbish, but she won't listen. She sooner believe her dad than me. How? I mean, why me? Why would anyone think that I'm having a... that we are having an affair? Who knows why Tommy thinks anything? The guy's a moron. 
And anyway, this is just stuff that he thinks he's seen. What, you mean he's been spying on you? On me? Yeah, probably. It's not like you've been doing anything wrong, is it? We'll have to think what to tell Craig. I don't want him knowing about Martin and Sally. Why not? The whole world needs to tell him what they've been up to. She's his girlfriend's mother. Yeah, and he won't be seeing her again. In fact, I don't know why we're here. I mean, living here. What's keeping us here? A couple of lousy jobs. We have to move away. Away from Lotterham, away from him. We don't have to move. Yeah, but we could. That's all I'm saying. I'm only thinking about her. She don't want to be seeing him every time she steps outside the front door. Yeah, but even if we do move, she's still going to see him. There's the baby, it's his and all. He's not having all to do with He'll the baby. He'll have to. No. It's all right. No, it's not all right. I'll not have him anywhere near you again. I mean, Martin's having nothing to do with his baby. Good. And neither am I. Katie? I'm not keeping it. I want an abortion. A few minutes. Yeah, well, I haven't got that long gas tired on. Oh, Tommy's taking Craig to a scout camp. Doctor's in it good and proper. But we'll be here at dinner time. Oh, I'll have to be, won't I? Tired always going out on a breakdown. Uh, hey, you, Sean, get a move on, you late. <laughs> hey, not off. I've got ten seconds to get to that door. Nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six. Five, oh, see you later. Five, three, two, one. Come in, ready or not. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to you? What? Oh. Hmm. Tommy Harris. What else? You're not going over, Katie, anymore. Well, Tommy doesn't bother about a little detail like that. He's a thug. Ought to be inside. Uh, you go to work, sir. Oh, um, see you then. So you want her talking to me anymore? She doesn't need to know everything that's going on. I've done nothing to be ashamed of. Huh? So why have you and Katie split up then? Tommy and his lies split us up. I don't care what he says. He doesn't want you living with her. No. That's the truth. You're too old. We loved each other. <sighs> She's half your age. And what difference does that make? She's a kid. She ran you ragged and she made a fool of you. Well, you were warned. You've only got yourself to blame. Why, well, girls, listen up, please. Why? Have you brought us some work? No, that's exactly what I need to talk to you about. We're listening, Mr Baldwin. All ears. Right. Now, as you know, the new orders aren't coming in as fast as we'd like. I do have a couple of things lined up to keep you going for the next week or so, but after that... What? To be fair, Fuzz, things are looking a bit bleak, love. I mean, the phone isn't ringing, you know, and we need a lot more work and we need it fast. Are you saying that redundancies are on the cards? They might be. Oh. Uh... You've threatened us with this before and it never happened. This ain't a threat, Lippy. I just think you should know the score, that's all. Well, if there are going to be redundancies, there are procedures that have to be followed. Yes, mm. thank you. I know my job. First out, then? Well, it better be. So, I'm losing my job to somebody like Angela Harris, who, by the way, hasn't even turned up this morning. Oh, yeah. can yeah. we give her a yeah. chance? Yeah. What for? I need my wages and I am on time every morning. She can live off Tommy. Kelly might have a point. Come on, Angela's no slacker. She must be sick. Yes. <laughs> Hang on, Mr Baldwin. How come things have gone rotten all of a sudden, then? Hmm? Uh, I didn't say they'd gone rotten, did I, Faz? What I said was, in the near future, I might have to lay some of you off, that's all. Well, there's no overtime, so... Sounds rotten to me. Oh, it's a sham. Killing the baby will just... kill everything me and Martin had. Are you changing your mind? I don't know. I thought he loved me. That's why I wanted his baby. I didn't get pregnant by mistake. He don't love you. He used to. But what good is that love? It's something I can tell the baby when it's older. Will it be interesting? Yes. Well, don't forget all the other things you'll need to explain and all. I'll have a better story than Sarah Platt. It won't be about some ladder bailing you. Why do you always compare yourself with her? Got a lot in common. No, you ain't, Katie. I can't see it. She was younger than me, Mum. And she kept her baby. Hi, I'm Martin. Hello, Sally. Have you seen Kevin? Well, there's nothing in the rovers. Oh, you look terrible. Yeah. I feel worse. Bet it won't serve me anymore. By the look of it, you've had enough. 
I've had enough for life. I don't mind telling you. Take it things are still the same with Katie. She might as well have done this. Oh, Gail. They're both as bad as each other. Oh, Martin, I'm so sorry. At it again, are ya? What's up? Can't you keep away from him? Ah, shut it. We've all heard just about enough for you. What are you gonna do? Go home, get a quick groping while Kev's at the garage? You know, someone should shut you up. Are you offering? Ignore him, Martin. Oh, he'll ignore me. He ain't come near me. He ain't got the guts. Oh, no. <laughs> no, you just like being near young girls, don't yeah. you? It'll be your younger next. You say that again, and I'll let you have it! Oh, you stinker booze. Do you like that? You say one more word about Sal. What are you seeing here, eh? I thought you liked him young and fit. Shut it! Oh, what? You lit me? Yeah! Yeah, I'll lick you. And I won't stop it in you. You think that'll keep me quiet? You're gonna have to kill me first, mate. Yeah? I'll kill you. If that's what you want. Well, come on, Ellie, see you try. Yeah, right, you ask for it! Martin, go! Martin! Like that, do you? Hey, Enjoy hey, it! Stop it! Hey, hey, where that came stop from. it! Get off! Let me kill him, Jeff! Get home! And you, get back to work. Yeah, let's both get back to work. Leave Platt to carry on with your missus. He's after every time you turn your back. They can't keep their hands off one another. You what? I told you to shut it! Oh, there he is. Proper gentleman, standing up for her, protecting her. And you're that thick, you can't even see it. Don't listen to him, Kevin! What are you talking about? I'm talking about your wife and your best mate. I'm talking about why I chinned him. Well, you chinned him because of Katie? Because you were cheating on Katie with her. He didn't, Kevin, he didn't! He did. With your wife, and I can prove it. <sighs> I saw you getting it on in his car. You what? Oh, come on. Hey, don't you dare say it didn't happen. It didn't. He's always in yours. He's in there hours. I've timed him. Ask our Angela, she knows and all. Oh, well, she will, won't she? I'm capable of anything, me. I'm the devil, aren't I? Oh, you're not that grand plat. You're just a dirty perv who's moved on from schoolgirls to other blokes' wives. Right. Where are you going? Kevin. You don't believe him, do you, Kev? Oh, come on. This is me. Where's he got it from? I don't know. He'll say anything, won't he? It's his sick fantasy. It's nonsense. You believe him. You're a moron. Unstuff yourself. Don't walk off. I'm still talking to you. Kevin. I want some answers. It's Tommy. He's mad. He's blinded by hate. He can't even see his own nose. Hey, believe her if you want. But I know what I saw. You've said enough. Oh, you're right there, love. I have. You. Oh, no. <laughs> Why not call me a slag and get it over with? It's happened before. We weren't even together then. Martin and I had a, a rubbish fling, a mistake, a, a bad idea. Why would we do it again? Why? It's possible. I don't think you believe that, Kevin. You're not stupid. Yeah, well, something's going on. You're never fully here anymore. What? Something's changed. You're not the same, Sal. I know the signs. But we're better now than we have been for a long time. You're always working late. I never see you. I can't put my finger on it, Sal, but you're different. Too right I am. I'm not willing to be bullied by you. I've got a career. I want a better life. Don't change the subject. What was you doing in his car? I gave him a kiss. We're old friends. And old lovers. I know Sarah does all right with Bethany. She couldn't live without her. Yeah, but you're not Sarah, are you? All right, I'm your mother, I'm biased, but... Love, you are in different leagues. She's one of blunt tools in the box. Nobel Prize material doesn't get up the duff playing doctors and nurses. <laughs> Katie, you've got possibilities. Looking after babies is the best she could ever hope for. I... I just don't know. But there's no father for Bethany. Is that fair? Your dad's got his faults, but you wouldn't have wanted to grow up without him, would you? No. There's bad blood with Martin now. Have this baby, and you'll think of him and what he's done to you every time you look at it. Just seen Platt and the Webster's. Told Kevin about his missus. Dropped a grenade right in amongst a lot of them. I swear on our kids' lives you're not having an affair. You heard? I can't believe you could ask me that! Swear! I swear. No, I won't. It's ridiculous. Swear! No, I won't! 
Who do you think you are? You should take my word for it. You can't do it, can you? Well, something's going on. And if you can't tell me, I'll find someone who will. Kevin! Sharp. Oh, you want me out of the way quick, do you? I don't want to be late. You're not ashamed of me, are you? I'm very proud. You're a brave girl. It's for the best, love. I know it is. I've no doubts. I don't want his brat. I want rid now. Let's go. It's not him, is it, Mom? No. It isn't anyone. And you've got no business talking like that. And you enjoy being oh, here he is. The imaginary cook cold. I want to know what's going on. Oh, that's a joke. Same as you are. You better start taking this serious. There's nothing to take seriously, Keith. It's ridiculous. You know what? You're as bad as he is. Get away from me! Get away from me! If you get away from me! Get away from me! Yeah? If you what are you going to do? Yeah? They will get kill you, Martin. They will kill get you! Get up! Get up, bitch! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! You all right, son? Oh, some me. Cockney pillock. Kieran, double, please. Katie Harris? Oh, yeah, until money's run out. Oh, yeah, you need a good swill after sewing truckloads of nicks all day. <laughs> well, it is thirsty work. You know where you finish each other's sentences off? Do you have your own special language and all? What, apart from English? Oh, oh, yeah, because some twins have their own special way of speaking, don't they? Yeah, what's it called? A Polarian tech? Oh, no, that's something entirely different. <clears throat> Vada the bone, no lallies on the Omi Ajax. Twins, private language, that's called cryptophasia. How do you know that? <laughs> My Kirk told me. What, Kirk? Yeah, Kirk. He reads the dictionary. He does? Oh, yeah, you want my Kirk on your pub quiz team, I tell you. <laughs> Kirk Sutherland? Yeah, Kirk. He's super fly. <laughs> <laughs> home again, home again, jiggity jig. There you go, love. <laughs> Look at that sad git. Hey, scumbag! Do you hear me, you scumbag? Tom, you're too busy for this now. I'm gonna tell him where we've been. Shock will sober him up or stop his heart if we look it. Open the door and get in the house. Come on, darling. I can't be pit -like. That's right. I regret that when he sobers up. He nearly regretted it when he was mullered. How did it go? Can we go on, please? Oh, don't say you didn't get it. Why not? I was so nervous. They said I had a weak bladder and there's nowhere to go on the job, so I weren't suitable. Hey, two little ducks! Oh. That was such a left back. Hey, mate. Told you you'd like it. Look, don't knock out till you've tried it in future. Do you win every time then, Vera? Do you, cos, like, lose a fortune? I can't believe I'm this upset. Neither can I. I feel so rejected. Yeah, well, it's them that's missed out. You just remember that. Hey, I've got a future in public transport. If the trams don't want me, the buses will. I'll make use of my PCV licence yet. Oh, you can drive buses? I had to when I was OK, the ferry and Cub Scouts around. Oh. Huh? I'll get an application form tomorrow. Do you still fancy me with my glasses? Of course I do. Where's all that come from? Are you sure? If anything, I fancy you more. More? Why more? Oh, it's something else to take off, isn't it? <laughs> oh, why, Miss Jones? You do look beautiful. <laughs> That's good. Do that again. Oh, why, Miss Jones? You do look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go to bed. <laughs> 
<laughs> Give us some back. Well, then you want me to say it again? No, I need him to see. <laughs> and if you want to discuss the price further, please don't hesitate to get in touch at any time. Uh, yours ever, blah, 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 etc. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to be honest, I am not very good with blubbing. Um, will you calm down and tell me what happened? It's Kevin. He thinks I'm having an affair. What, with me? With an ex-boyfriend, Martin. Friend of the family. So we're in the clear? <sighs> well, so, why does he think you're having it away with this Martin? Because <sighs> some neighbour's been spreading... Oh, it's not worth going into it. But it's because of us. Because I'm looking like a woman who's having an affair. It's just that they've got the wrong man, but it's only a matter of time. He knows nothing. So what are you worried about? Because Sophie heard us arguing and she knows what it's about. So? So she's going to tell Rosie. And Rosie knows about the condom and she's going to put the rumours together and... Kevin's going to find out. Hey, 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 hey. <gasps> He's not going to find out. Huh? Think about it. Have a word with Rosie. Bribe her. You can get round her. She's a little girl. What am I doing to my family? All the lies. Hey, hey. We are worth it. What are you doing? What do you think? Might as well get home for a sheep as a lamb. Nobody is going to get caught. <sighs> it's Kevin. We're not going to get caught. Oh. All right, mate. I want to talk to Sally. She's a bit upset. I was just... You've upset her. Why? What she said? Well, nothing. Look, is everything all right? It's private. I want to speak to her. You better go in. Hey. Is there anything I can do for you? Oh, you name it, Tom. Can't you say she don't want fussing over? I'm looking after her. It's not like she's just had her tonsils out. I know. It's emotional, isn't it? I'm just trying to help. I can hear you. I am in the room. Look, uh, if you want to talk or there's hope bothering you, I'm here for you. You really want to know what I'm thinking? Yeah? I'm thinking. I've had an operation to kill my baby. I've had it pulled out of me. It's, it's dead. And I'm, I'm thinking there must be something wrong with me because I'm pleased. There's not wrong with you. I'm relieved I'm away from Martin. I've nothing to do with him. He has gone from my life and so's his baby. And that is brilliant. I'm pleased and I'm relieved. It's the best thing, love. Mm, I'm going to bed. You should eat some out. I've got some crackers by my bed. I won't go hypo. Got me all upset at work now. How professional does that look? I don't care about your poxy job. Oh, we should do. Look what it's done for us. Let's give us some cash. I'm not coming here to talk about this place anyway. I've come to talk about us. I'm not having an affair with Martin. Then why don't I believe you? Well, you'll have to answer that. I'm not as dense as you think, Sal. I know when we got back together, it was a compromise. I mean, you made it crystal clear that you didn't love me anymore. But I do love Oh, you. shut up! And just let me finish. I knew that. But I loved you. And I thought I could live with that. I thought us being together with our daughters, being a, a proper family, being a good husband, I thought that I'd, I'd heal things. Us being together would make it better. What a house. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Even in bed as well. Where's it come from? From us. No. 
That's it, it hasn't, Sal. That's what's wrong. You're telling me you love me. We're sleeping together, but something else has caused it. Because I look at our marriage, and it's not working. It is. No, it's not, Sal. I don't believe you. You're lying. You're seeing Martin, and I know it's true because I feel it. I swear on Rosie and Sophie's life that I am not having an affair with Martin. You're lying. I wouldn't lie on them. You're lying! Oh, OK. This is so difficult for me. I'm having... Is everything all right? Everything's fine. I'm having none of this because I love you and I am not having an affair. I don't believe you. Then get out. <laughs>